So yes, you guys. Da -da 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 I have to pull up my book that I just closed because I'm a moron. Yeah, good. See, again, I hope your expectations aren't too high because this is how this is going to start. It's all good. Any new system is kind of like that. I don't know why I closed anything. I need this all. Probably take the opportunity to go get some beer. That's wise. I highly encourage people to drink alcohol. The drunker you get, the better looking this campaign is going to seem. All right, I guess I'm <laughs> not the rum. Hang on one sec, I'll be right back. All right, you get your drinks while I find my PDFs. Don't worry, as the GM, I too am drinking. alcohol thing not a bad I don't thing. know what that means I encourage this behavior yeah for like the last year like I think about drinking alcohol and it's like yeah it's called adulting Uh, Dan, does your character have a tie into the Starfinders, or is he just there and eager? I bet you he got up to get a drink. So I will say my sister's birthday is in a couple weeks, and we plan to have like a cookout kind of thing. So the stream is live. You're streaming this shit right now. Of course. No pressure. No pressure. Alex just made me a weak ass drink. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably for the best. <laughs> he handed it to me. He's like, tell me if this is too strong and if not too bad. And it's like, bitch, I can't even taste the vodka. Isn't that the point of vodka? No, if it doesn't burn when it goes down, how do I know it's working? Vodka. It makes me sick. More of a, if I'm gonna drink hard liquor, it's gonna be whiskey. Or, uh, let's see, whiskey, sake, tequila. That's pretty much about it. Everything else I'm mixing or just having wine or something. Rum with tequila. Okay, now it burns. We're good. <laughs> good if it doesn't hurt a little. My cat was trying to drink cranberry juice and rum. Cat. Yeah, strange husband. At least it's not cranberry juice and vodka, though. Otherwise, Buster would have some things to say. <laughs> hey, leave me out of this. No. I would just accuse you of dating a college girl, that's all. Your microphone is doing weird shit again where it sounds really weird in the background. Well, I don't know. Put your microphone on a pillow or something. Jesus Christ. It's on stuff and Daisy won't get out of my seat. Well, Daisy... She's, I'm trying to move her and she's biting me right now. Just poke her good eye. <laughs> Just poke her good eye? What? That's harsh. She only has one eye. He has a cat with one eye. Ah. And her name is Daisy, short for Oopsie Daisy. Gotcha. It uh, should have been Lana, but... That still makes well, blame Lana. Kelly. I do, but I blame you for having smaller balls than Kelly. It's her cat. Yeah, but aren't you the man of the house? <laughs> no, no, that's where you're mistaken. <laughs> See, Alex knows too. Reminds me of my, uh... First apartment I was sharing with some of my friends, we inherited a cat from one of their sisters. And she just kind of basically dropped him in our laps and we didn't have any choice. She insisted constantly that the cat's name was Powder. 
We are three guys sharing an apartment together with a cat. We are not going to call our cat Powder. It's a cute name. Therefore, he was called Pirate from now on. I have a cat named Prince. Yeah, that's much better. This is the most gnarly looking cat you've ever seen. But is Dan back now? Dan. Yes, I am back, and you are okay. literally driving me to drink. Excellent. Perfect. Good. My cat's name is Prince Boo Black. He's amazing. Now take a shot. Okay. Uh, Dan, did your character have a tie into Starfinder? Uh, he's come to the station looking for adventure. Starfinder sounds Perfect. like a great place for that. Perfect. Okay. Excellent. Shady Starfinders already knows you're on your way. Don't you worry. All right. So that's us, right? All of us. One, two, three, four, five, six. How many of us there are? Okay. That silence. That means that we're all here. Perfect. All right. So, you guys have departed from whatever corner of the known and traveled universe aboard the Okimoro? Yeah, that one. The Okimoro ship. It has stopped off, had layovers, jumped across, you know, planet to planet, picking up, dropping off various spacefaring adventurers. As far as I know, none of you know each other, so, you know, you've seen lots of new faces, strange faces. Um, but all of you have something in common, which is that you've been contacted by the Starfinder Society. Um, they've seen other work of yours, or they've heard that you were coming in. They're having a little bit of a recruitment... Drive. Recruitment fair. Drive. Drive. There we go. Recruitment drive. That's the word I'm looking for. In other words, they've lowered their usual standards or now looking yes. for us. Um, and all of you have made arrangements to meet a Dorvan Starfinder by the name of Duravor Creel. Uh, he's promised to show you around the station, help you get settled, and to bring you in as possible recruits, you know, to do the interview, any trials, go over your resumes, etc., and stuff like that. So you guys have just arrived at Absalom Station um, in Docking Bay 94. And as you're mulling about, grabbing your, your luggage, your bags, waiting for the doors to open, etc., etc., you guys can describe your characters and introduce yourselves in a quick and brief thing for our wonderful viewers. All one or two of them. Great. Mostly for me, though. And we'll start with my husband, because why not? Yeah, I was waiting for that one. Uh, okay. So, Raz is a rather large Vesk. Uh, as all tend to be. Um, he's fairly battle-scarred, again, as most Vesks tend to be. Um, <clears throat> he's uh, kind of a dull shade of green. He's got a lot of big teeth. He's got uh, kind of a, a toothy beard going on there, too, because Vesk, apparently, instead of having uh, no beard, as one would expect of something with scales, they have, like, teeth for beards. It's weird. Um, Regardless, uh, he is uh, kind of a quiet individual. He's okay with talking to people. He's just not good at talking to people. So when it comes to small talk, he uh, fumbles a bit. Uh, so if anybody had uh, made an effort to chat with him on the flight, uh, they probably would have been doing most of the talking. Beautiful. Who's next? You're going to have to call on the class, I think. All right, Dan's next. Well, uh, speaking of people trying to talk to him, uh, shut up a uh, rather, maybe a little bit on the small side, Sheeran, uh, with uh, purple skin, would definitely have tried to chat up everyone. Uh, his uh, qu quick voice just uh, echoing in your mind, no matter how much you want it to stop, uh, introducing himself, uh, asking everything about you, telling you everything about him, uh, his 
uh, life on Brithedon, uh pissing off all of the covet or what were they something agents. Uh, confluence agents to the point where they suggested that he uh, uh, head over to Absalom. That's a so, good uh, to go. so, so Raz, you can, you want to be my friend? Raz, kind of. Uh, I assume you're asking this question at the very end of the trip after the whole long. Oh no, no, that's like that's like two minutes into this conversation. Oh, okay, of course. Well, then he he would probably grunt and like look at you as though trying to size you up to see if he could eat you or something probably uh, and then shrug kind of nod sure hooray and then he will repeat the process with basically everyone on the ship until he runs out of time i think this is going to be long journey really have you been on other journeys before this is my first one and with that mark has volunteered to be next Yar-yar wants to pilot ships and work on fancy engines. Yar-yar, not be finding these things on Antigua. Yar-yar, come to society. They give out ships in society, yes? Yes? When do we get our ships? They have ships. Hmm? <laughs> Their firm stance on ships is that they have ships. But that's why I'm going to society. They have the ships. I want exactly. to work on the ships. I really wish Shut Up would shut up, though. Don't we all? Yar -yar. Alrighty. Yar Yar is a pilot, or wannabe pilot, who likes to tinker with engineering and is a Isoki Ratkin. Uh, very often you'll find him crawling around in the ductworks in between parts and engines, and it really is the rodent he resembles in many ways as an engineering rat. Does he, chew, does he chew through the cables to disable the bombs? He only chews through the cables if uh, they need to be dismantled anyway. Good, yeah. yeah. You can't always have the right hydra spanner on your pocket, in your in your cheek at the time. Sometimes you just gotta use your teeth. Oh yeah, that's a really cool thing about the Yosoki. I don't know if he told you about that. Every now and then he'll have a sl slightly slurred or garbled speech, and that usually just means that he's packing a little too much in his mouth. All right. Ray. Ryder. Brit. Whatever you want to be called. Pick a name. Then tell me what I should refer to you as. What is your preferred pronoun? No, what's your preferred noun? I need the noun. Go with Ray. Ray. Okay, Ray. God, I can Ray. <laughs> God forbid you should use your name. <laughs> Ray Ray. Please don't do the Ray Ray thing. Too late. It's done. Yeah, I think you've uh, just opened up a box that won't close again at this point. Okay. So, Corius is a... Rather young, rather curious, ha <laughs> uh, ha, android. Uh, she hasn't been around very long uh, and is very keen on learning anything and everything. So the entire time Shut Up's been talking, she's just been sitting there listening, but she's got a very blank look on her face. And when he pauses for a second, wondering if she's listening, she'll make an effort to smile. But it'll be that weird, like... Teeth bearing smile? I am I doing this right? This is what smile. smiles are supposed to look like, right, guys? Uh, what's her answer when he asks if she'll be his friend? Corius can be friend? Friend is when we are nice to each other, right? Yes, yes. Ah, Corius can be nice. Like exactly. That, right? Yes. yes. <laughs> Corius is nice to all beings in space. Now what about on planet? 
Corius is nice to beings on planets as long as they don't try to enslave her. Fair. Oh, there we go. Right there. <laughs> All right. Tommy, are you prepared for this? Yes, I think so. Perfect. Go. All right. Uh, let's see here. Tori is a Los Junta soldier who's currently aspiring to be a Solarian, which is um, which is why he's setting off on a venture. He is, he's not unfriendly, he's actually pretty friendly, although he might come off as indifferent. Uh, he's not huge on conversation. Um, aside from not being big on conversation, he does not like shut up at all. Like uh, if he's tried to get his attention, he probably snubbed him. Right. Uh, shut up will continue being persistent and trying to be his friend. Uh, other than that, um, in regards to his physical appearance, he's a typical kind of short brawny Lashanta, uh, but he is covered in armor right now, like his face is obscured. Airport, or sorry, spaceport security will have things to say about that soon, don't you worry. All right. All right, excellent, perfect. Yeah, yeah I wonder if he's enjoyed. Robot to take him apart. I step away from the little rat. So do I. All right. So the Okimoro has just landed in Docking Bay 94. Um, as you're mulling about, you observe these things. You now know kind of what kind of traveling you had. It's been noisy in your head. Not really out loud. Your ears are fine. It's your brain. It's been noisy in your head thanks to the Shirin's telepathic abilities. Um, the final docking procedures take a few minutes, at which point the captain attendant welcomes the shuttle's passengers to Absalon Station! And... Um, no, there's no map just yet. Don't you worry, that's on purpose. The brightly lit docks of Absalon Station are abuzz with activity as travelers bustle by, preparing to board or disembark from starships bound to or from any of dozens of worlds. Rash and swaggering star pilots scurrying Isoki. How do you pronounce that, Mark? Isoki. Isoki mechanics. And expectant colonists mingle with enigmatic Kasatha mystics, hard-faced asteroid miners, imposing vest mercenaries, and more, creating a microcosm of the abundance and variety of life in the pack world. New arrivals meet friends, loved ones, or business contacts, and are whisked away into the humming activity of daily life on the vast space station. Beyond them, ground crews tend to the dock ships, and dock workers and mechanized cargo lifters load and unload freight and baggage. A sharp tang of ozone hangs in the air, a byproduct of electrical discharges from the dock ships, but underneath, the station's atmosphere has a slightly used aroma. Interpret that how you wish. The docking bay's uh, deck plates thrum beneath your feet, though whether that's from the passage of innumerable feet or the vibrations of the station's power conduits and air recycling system is impossible to say. All right, so as you remember, you have a contact, Duravar Creel. He said he'd meet you here, show you around. And I get perception checks all around. I can't wait till the sheet comes out so I can get rid of the ugly purple. Raz is trying really hard to stop listening to Yar Yar, <laughs> or uh, to Shut Up, rather. For both of us, but really. It's really hard. <laughs> he's pretty uh, okay with the rat. I mean, the rat's he's, small He's getting a bit distracted care. by the, the new sights and sounds. There's there so many go. moving parts. Corius is just looking around. What's this? What was that? What does this do? What's this? Light bulbs in the eyes. What's this? Eyes. Jesus Christ. You guys are not very perceptive. <laughs> We're level one. Mark rolled low. And everybody else has just got no mod. That's beautiful. <laughs> All right, so. We're, we're all. Uh, Tori's got a minus one. This is this is wonderful. 
We're all straight off the ever. ship. We're stars, you know, blinded by the wonder of Absalom Station. All right, well. <clears throat> all right, so while you're all disembarking, uh, Yaya is able to spot a uh, dwarf kind of waiting in the middle of everything where, you know, generally people are meeting the people that they're meeting from the ship. Um, and so Creel is a tall and lanky dwarf with a bristly iron gray beard and deep set eyes beneath bushy eyebrows. With his patched and stained coveralls, the dwarf looks just like another dock worker, but a badge bearing a symbol of, of uh, the Starfinder Society stands out on his chest. Yar just walks right over to him with a big wide grin. With very short, sharp, pointy teeth in the middle. Um, and... Yeah, so when, as you get closer, you notice that he's kind of checking the computer he's holding and he's looking up and scanning the crowd. Uh, he greets Yar Yar with a smile as he comes over. And to the others, he gives kind of a big old shout and holler, waves, tries to make eye contact, jumps up and down, trying to get you to all come over. Uh, shout up. Uh, scuttles over and uh, begins tele uh, telepathying him. Uh, hi there! Look, see? There's a dwarf. He's so fancy. I think I've used that portrait at some point. I'm sure you have, because I'm pretty sure it's a Shadowrun dwarf. Yep. It is. <laughs> uh, hi there! Are you, are you the guy? Hi. Alright. Um, are you a dwarf? I, I've never met a dwarf. Hold on here. Stop! Now everyone stops. While I get this ready. Check a pose. Check a pose. Pull out your token. Because for all my planning, I forgot to move your token. Here. just pulls on bullet tooth's leg armor or something dangling it's like hmm rest 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 is, is, is this the guy is this the guy Raz uh, kind of looks hold on hold on no none of you stop Freeze <laughs> Sorry. Are we when not I supposed said stop to... I meant it hold on are we not supposed <laughs> to sit here at RP come on now <laughs> Just... Well, RP, but you guys are RPing over here. <laughs> Worst DM ever. Shut up, bite me, you bitch. <laughs> Alright, hold on one second. I gotta put my headphones down so I can go bite her. <laughs> it's not that kind of RP! Hold on. See, no, I'll get this. I'll get the hang of this DMing thing again right away here. It's just gonna take me a minute. It's all good. Oh, right. So, as you're being called over and you slowly start breaking off from the general group of people exiting the Okimoro, you hear a ring of gunfire. What's up, me? What's up, me? And everyone. Wow, has already rolled initiative with all of their shit, so let me clear this out. <laughs> where where are we? Uh, I have no control over my what? token. Why? Why? Uh, just, uh, you want to copy them from the previous page, then they'll have all the stuff still connected. Damn it. He probably copied them before he started fucking with them. No, I assigned them to the sheets. I thought I could just drag them off from the sheets, but apparently that's not very effective. You probably assigned them to the sheets before you did everything for them. Mm -hmm. Probably. Yeah, they won't dynamically update. You gotta reattach them. I mean, if you just keep copying between sheets, it works fine. I'm gonna delete these and just go copy. They should really be able to just be draggable and be universal. Mark, make that happen. Uh, it does happen. You just have to do it right. 
Mark, make it happen in a way that I like. <laughs> what friends Alex. are for, right? Which is to say, I'll get Alex to do it. She would have to give me GM control over anything in here, which is not going to happen. I don't give him control over anything anywhere anymore. <laughs> you are, are big. You are, are giant. Stop on the little people. Oh, yeah, you are small again. Tommy, stop fucking with your character. <laughs> I like spinning it. Wow, you people. <laughs> What did I do? You're not Maybe people. Maybe you, you weren't part of you people. You're not people. You don't count. All right. We good? Everyone's got control again? Assuming control. Excellent. Roll your initiative. I was next to this fucker. No, you weren't. Oh, okay. Was I? All right. I'm over here then. Okay. You're wherever I tell you you were. You too. The rest of us are really using guns, so it doesn't really matter where we are. Oh, yes! <laughs> pew pew! Suddenly, the sound of gunfire rings out. And you realize that there, you are now caught in the crossfire of some fire. So who are the actual and... combatants on this map here? Now, isn't that the trick? Hey. So the shots ring out. Are there any, like, Laser trails. I want everybody or... to roll me a 1d6, please. Yeah, okay. Alright, there's a lot of stuff going on on this map, and I'm really rusty at this. Alrighty. So what have we got here? So unfortunately, Friel the dwarf is just paralyzed with fear. And as the gunfire gets started, one clips him and he crumples. Boom. Also, Mark, stop imposing your naming conventions on other people. Someone else did it. That no, I him. did not. <laughs> That's fine. Clearly, you need to be GM Tipsy dash GM Tipsy. Parentheses, GM Tipsy. <laughs> Didn't one time we write, I'm with stupid? Yeah, we did. That was the greatest. <laughs> All right, anyways, combat, right. I got this. I got this, guys. I'm so excited. I'm so excited and a little bit, you know, anti. Terrified. Yeah. Also that. I've got a lot of social anxiety I'm dealing with right here. <laughs> la, 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 la. All oh, right, so it doesn't take you long to identify where the shots are coming from. It seems to be in a crossfire from this side over towards this side. Um, people are screaming and fleeing, trying to cower in corners. There's a lot of cover and a lot of boxes here. Um... Except for us, we're standing right in the middle of nowhere. Except for you guys, we're standing right in the middle of nowhere. Uh, awesome. Fortunately, nothing seems to come towards you as this gunfire breaks out, and none of you are targeted by the, or randomly shot, I guess, by the stray, any stray bullets. So it looks like right now the only casualty is your dwarf in contact. And...
Shit. That's always a good thing to hear from a DM. <laughs> okay. That just could have been interesting, okay? Uh, you don't roll to back up in Starfinder. Right! Right! Okay. I forgot about that. Shit, okay. What would we do without Dan here? Uh, play wrong. Very wrong. Dishonor your family. Dishonor oh. your cow! And top of the round. Alright, the next wave of firing comes out. And if you guys could all roll 1d6s again. Did we not do anything on the first round? It was a surprise round. Oh, okay. You were very surprised that suddenly you were caught in the middle of crossfire. Yep. Hence the lovely negative one perception rolls. Yeah, y'all had uh, some special types of perception. Alright, so once again, none of you are getting nailed. I don't know what I just did, but I think I made fire. Yeah, I saw fire <laughs> from was, three uh, things. That was probably Mark. Usually. All right. And shut up. You're up. All right. So which one of them actually shot our dwarf? You guys can't tell. There's just a lot of firing going between the two. It's impossible to tell what direction actually hit him. Uh, he'll feel better. Ah, ah, not friends, not friends. Uh, move up to here and go full defense. Alrighty. There you are. Dara looks confused. Hey, shut up says we're not friends. Ah, fire! He books it, hopping over the carriage, baggage cart. Uh, I we were talking is. about this. Yes, that is a one of those things that tows the baggage around. And, Leaps between the carts or over the carts or under the carts and tries to take cover. Alrighty. All right. Another burst of fire, you know, crossfire. Uh, can I get another batch of 1d6s from you all? Right, that's gonna happen a lot through this combat. Oh, oh man! Somebody's getting shot. Well, Roll to one. Need to take full cover, so lots of defense. Shut up. Uh, one comes grazing pretty close to you, but misses entirely. Okay. Oh, wait. Shit. No, I did that wrong. Yeah, that's Tommy now. Tori, come back. Uh, is the dwarf on the initiative? No, he's down. Oh, he's, he's like down? Oh, down? oh, yeah, he's down. He's, he's crumpled. Oh, okay. When I said he drops, I meant he drops. Oh, I did not... I didn't catch Take that. that. I mean that. Okay. Right. Drops. When I say drops, it means they're no longer really doing things that you would hope alive people would do. All right. A quick question. I can replace a standard action with a move action, right? Yes. Okay. So. All right, so seeing that Yarya is apparently not the threat, I move behind cover and then use my standard action as a move action and draw my weapon. Okay. 
sounds good. Resvakoresh Bullet Tooth, you're up. I like how you're the only person who has not decided just to call him Raz. It's so much more obnoxious to do it the other way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... I'm going to... So it looks like these guys are shooting at these guys, right? I mean, there's fire that's coming from here over to this way. I couldn't see the end of those arrows, so it was... Uh... Back and forth, back and forth. People are shooting, people are screaming, people are running, people are hiding. Yeah, it's a dog oh, getting along here. We can see who's shooting. I mean, it's chaos, but yes, you can tell where bullets are coming from if you're watching for bullets. I'm guessing it's the people with the guns. <laughs> Do any of them look particularly like their security personnel? No, they're kind of wearing some... Ragtag armors, you know, ripped t-shirts. Some of them sure. have tattoos. Okay. Turned around baseball caps. Some of them look like they might trip on their pants because they're kind of hanging down to their knees. That's fair. Okay, I'm going to double move them. I was going to charge that guy, but that seems like a poor idea. It's only a poor idea if you die. I'm going to move to there. And what are you doing? Just double moving to there? Yeah, that's double move, so... Alrighty. And... Corius. Oh, I believe this is what is called a gang fight. They must be having a turf war. Am I using those words correctly? How intriguing. I want to see this. Wow, what a retard. What is her in? <laughs> <laughs> She's going to move. They're like, are these like up tall or? or are these I mean, they're, they're canisters. Um, if you were to crouch down behind them, you could probably get some cover. Containers what are they of canisters highly... of? <laughs> canisters of highly flammable gas. Um. There are some yellow warning labels, however, you probably don't have time to stop and read anything more than a warning. Okay. So, she sees the warning labels, she knows what those are. Why? There's nowhere <laughs> really for her to hide. Lovely. You can come hang with Tore and Yar Yar. Hide between them. They're both bigger than you. There you go, well, not Yar Yar. Alright, she's gonna There's come here. Rat. But do that thing where she's, like, poking over the top of it, so she can watch. Like, you can see her nose and her eyes. Yeah, not total cover, just partial cover. Got it. Right. She's too curious for her own good. 1d6s, please. So yar Yar, that is not a 1d6. And somebody on this side goes down. Here I gurgle and some screams and the shooting is one decibel lower. Shut up, oh, you're up. Oh, oh no, poor door friend. Uh, so move action, pull out a serum. Standard action, put the serum down the dwarf's throat. And then swift action, fall prone. Uh, none okay. of these people seem to be targeting us directly. We're just getting hit in crossfire. Yeah, I mean, there's just bullets everywhere. You guys are literally in the middle of it all. If they're okay. targeting you, it's hard to tell. It doesn't seem to be. I mean, only one of you has even been close to getting hit. Yeah, that or they're just really bad shots. All right. That's uh, possible, too. Is he conscious now? Uh, no, he still appears to be unconscious. Oh, that's weird, since any amount of healing is supposed to make you conscious. 
Yes, strange, isn't it? Best to roll with it. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. They have guns. They have toys. I want some. Ariar is going to move over this way. And can he? This is a shooter here. I mean, he's got a gun. He appears to be aiming at stuff. All right, so crouching down prone on the ground, he's going to try to shoot his ankles out. Okay. Unfortunately, failing horribly. You, you try, and you do a really good job shooting out the tire. Makes a terrible sound, but fortunately, there's already a lot of shooting. You might be able to play it off. No, I have some cover. <laughs> Distraction. Get him next time. Give me them one d sixes. Like you said, they're just shooting across us, right? We're in the middle of a crossfire? Correct. Okay, uh, so what's this thing down here? Like this thing in the corner, can you describe it to me? Like how tall yes. is it? It's five feet tall. And very metally. It's... All right, let's see then. It's kind of loud, it's making a sound. You think it might have like... Okay, well, I'm going to move over here and cover against it. And, um... You're not sure that you have cover there, but you move there and you act like you have cover. Good. Right, yeah. I'm acting like I have cover. I want to look around. Sounds good. I guess that's it for my turn. Yeah, alrighty. Well, is there anything in particular you're looking around for? You can give me a perception check. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm just looking uh, in the area above me where... Oh, hang on, sorry, my uh, thing went back up. I'm just looking at the area above me where I see some, or where I thought some of the crossfire is coming from. So let me yep. roll perception. Give me a, yeah, give me a perception. Oh, God. Wow. You're like, yep, those guys have guns. Especially that guy right there. That guy, is, he's got a gun. Not a very perceptive group. Like, I think they're bipedal. He looks like he's been shot, but is also shooting. There you go. All right, that's all the info there? That's all the info you're getting there with your five. Don't worry. I know you're not wise. I do have minus two to wisdom. Beautiful. Now you have a minus one to wisdom. Well, to the modifier, but I mean minus two total. Minus two from the base stats. So you got an eight, right? Yes. Yeah, there you go. All right. Razivac. So I'm going to come team. around the uh, other side of this thing. And punch this guy in the back of the head. You flatten him. He was standing. He was shooting. He even turned to look at you. But unfortunately, it was too late. And now he's on the ground, bleeding. Your ears, ears perk up, right? Oh, I did get him. <laughs> Where are you? You're up. Yes, can I see this guy here? 
if you're peeking over, you can see him as he's peeking up and shooting and stuff like that. All right. Uh, seeing Raz go around the corner and then hearing that poor guy cry out in pain. She's going to look over and go, oh, are we attacking then? And she's going to turn back to this guy. And as soon as he peeks up so she can see him, she's going to cast Daze on him. All done. His brain should be humming. But then she's gonna go back down um, but still be watching. Yep, so this guy's dazed. Yeah. Just like the Pathfinder spell, one round. One round? Yep. One round and then he's immune for 24 hours. Oh, is he? Yeah. Oh, already. Oh no, one minute. Oops. Okay. One Works. minute. The one minute thermium. Sorry. Oh, okay. I was like, hot damn. Man, I would just totally be obnoxious that spell and target my own party. Be like, I daze you <laughs> for one round, just six seconds. <laughs> All oh, right. So, with that, I guess that means. Uh, let's give me the one d sixes real quick. Five, five. Ah, oh, you had to break the pattern. Yeah, I know, right? Combo breaker. I've had threes for like four in a row now, so. I'm good with this. Y'all can keep your fives. All right, more firing, blah, blah, blah. Shut up, you're up. The, does the dwarf appear to be breathing? Mm -hmm. I mean, do you wanna make a check on that? Uh, I guess we could try. I don't know, pretty good. Hey, well done. No, he doesn't. But, but I gave him a serum and everything. You did. My goodness. It's almost like reverse plot armor or something. Uh, all right. Uh, what is it to drag him? Or I guess how much bulk is his body? That is an excellent question. Does anyone happen to know the average weight of a door? Like 220-ish. Except it's not weight, it's bulk we need. Right. Medium creature, same as any other humanoid. Probably at least both two. Oh, that should be fine then. I All mean, right. you're of medium size. I'll let you drag him around. Move, you know, not uh, very fast, but go ahead. Are, are these doors an exit to this area? Uh, if they are, they appear to be shut tight, like it's some sort of garage door for this type of vehicle. All right, so I'll the stand up. The primary you see are over here. I will stand up, grab him, and just just head south. Alrighty. Alrighty. Well done. Yar yar. Yar yar crawls up on the part over here next to the box and takes careful aim at the, this guy over here, trying not to be noticed. Alright. Tries in a trick, trick attack. Tells him to become flat-footed while he shoots. Oh, god damn. I don't know what trick attack is. Trick attack is like... there's a 29 stealth on there. You're, You're very ready? hiding considering you're standing in the open. So he's, he's crouched in next to this box over here. Okay. Um, it's an operative that's, thing. That's, the way uh, the trick work check you're not, works. You're, if you're there, you're on top of it. Oh, I thought there was space on the side there. All right, I'll well, do I it mean, from you the back here. Up, Either way. 
Wait, which box are you trying to stand next to? So the actual trolley itself tucked in next to the box. You're a small creature, right? Yes. I'll allow it. Okay. Thank you. The way Chirk Attack works is it's a full round action. I make a okay. stealth check versus... How did you get up there if it's a full round action? So the full round action also includes 30 foot of movement. Okay, carry on. Sorry, I need clarification for this shit. No, it's all good. First time we're seeing it. So he makes a, a stealth check versus DC 20 plus or CR. If he beats it, they're flat footed and he does three extra damage if he hits. And then you proceed to make a regular attack and against Wait, no, it's versus their DC? Oh, okay, you're making the roll against their DC. I'm not making a roll versus a DC. Correct, okay. it's my stealth check versus Damn. 20 there goes their next plus crit. CR. <laughs> they're All they're right. not they're so not rolling it. anything. Whatever yeah. it is, you do it. Ta-da! <laughs> they don't How have much to roll damage anything. does he take? None, because I missed. Oh, wow, did you ever? Well, very fancy missing. <laughs> I just want to hit them. A canister of radioactive goo behind them. <laughs> Um, 1d6 is all around. Oh man. God damn it, you broke the pattern again. You're supposed to roll uh, a four. Don't give a fuck. All right. So, Corius. One comes by you, you think maybe. It kind of half comes near you. That's it also might have been aiming at the civilians behind you. You don't know. And Tori, you're up. Oh, okay, wait, hold so... on. Let me put a mark on the one that's down. There we go. Okay, so I want to run up on this guy. Up here, so I come up next to this guy. Now, if I like, uh, if I like flip him over, or whatever, do I see any identifying like marks or anything on him? Um, he's got a bandana covering his face. He's got, you know, short hair. He's got some tattoos. Um, but nothing that you know says, "Hi, my name's John." Gotcha, all right. Okay, so then, after seeing that, I'm gonna take my standard action to move into cover right up here. Sounds good. Razavak or Ash Bullet Tooth? I'm gonna start adding more portions of his name in here just so that you'll say all of them. <laughs> I just want you to know that. Um, I will. Can I? bull rush a box into someone? I don't know. That sounds awesome. It sounds really cool. So I'm going to say yes. Okay. But um, I'm going to require a strength check on top of your combat maneuver check. Okay. Uh, sure, yeah. Give me one second then. And what box are you trying to get? Because physics says that you might have a hard time with that. Uh, hmm. Tori is kind of in my way. I was, way to I go, was just going to hit most of these boxes right here-ish. And try and knock them into that guy. Hopefully, you know. Well, your problem being that... This box doesn't move sideways without moving this box, and you're not exactly going to be able to move this box without standing where Tori is. So while it's cool, physics decides that those boxes might be stuck where they are. That said, feel free to combat maneuver that box and just charge through so you don't have to go around the boxes. Sure, why not? I'll combat maneuver this box then and say, fuck you box, get out of my way. Uh, so what's the kinetic AC of a box? 
<laughs> Let's go with five. I imagine yeah, they're pretty easy to hit. <laughs> okay. So the uh, uh, CMAC of a box is going to be 12 then. Sure. And then we'll count that with your strength because that's already, you know, high that enough for grappling box. a box. Yeah, I rolled a one anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so I trip right before I hit it and just mash my face right up against the box. I'm just picturing Bullet Tooth with his head stuck in the box. So that box, Maybe. while looks wooden from the outside, you quickly realize that there might be a live hippopotamus crushed in there. Or his head stuck in something else, apparently. I would like to offer him a sympathetic pat on the back. I will allow that as a free action. Reactions don't exist. Corey. Everything costs something. No, no, no. There are some actions it's which a... are just negligible actions. There's just no such thing as a free act. It's like other action or something. Banter and shit talking. We, we can call them a reaction. Nope, because reactions are a thing. No, that's what I mean, though. That's, a, that's my reaction action. All right, so you can make no attacks of opportunity. <laughs> it's still worth it. So, I know this is probably a useless use of one of my spell slots. Excellent. But I'm going to do it anywhere, anyways, because it's going to be funny. Excellent. That's my favorite. Yeah. Corey's is going to notice that Shadow's trying to drag the... The, dwarf. the dead gore... Dwarf. That it might be a little hard. And she's going to peek over and cast Grease on the Dwarf. So now he's slippery and will slide across the floor. Doesn't that make him harder to move? Yep. Yes, because he's harder to hold now. But he's easier to move <laughs> across the floor. You could totally, like, belly slide on him. If Shut Up moves his grip to not his wrist, I'll allow it to not impair him and instead make it slide because, you know, that's probably the intent. And I like to assume that casters have some moderate amount of control over themselves. Some. Some. Corius is helping. I like creativity. If you give me a good narrative to go along with it, I'll say yes. As long as it's not dumb. And he as long as you don't roll a one. Now. He'll slide. Yeah, we'll make him a little slippy. Shut up just has to kind of re-get a grip and he'll be golden. Then she's gonna kind of like crouch down and move this way so she can get a better look at the other opponents. Sounds good. Alrighty. And this guy's no longer big. Hey, guess what I want from you guys? Give me them D6s. Well, he is a vest. That is yeah, not. Yeah, that was. I thought the last thing I had done was the D6. Apparently, I was wrong. Okay. Another combatant leaves the fight. And again, you guys have managed to dodge most of the bullets so far. And shut up! You've All got right. a greasy dwarf who... A little slippery. To drag his greasy dwarf back behind the boxes and then kind of antenna quivering and whatever the bug equivalent of tears are. He's, just, he, he, he's been unalived! These bad men! Get him! Get him! And then he's going to use get him on that guy. Okay, and get him is? <laughs> that. As we all wait in anticipation. Yes, excellent. Good. Plus one to attack this fucker in particular. Man, that fucker's having a bad day. But at least he didn't get boxes on his head. Yar yar, you're up. Yar -yar You've been make... told to get him. All right, Yar Yar makes a, a weird, like almost choking, action. Like he's like 
having trouble breathing, and all of a sudden he manages to spit up a gun from his mouth that's all little saliva gooey. And holding that in hand, he raises it towards this fellow behind the boxes and tries to take a shot. Does that include the plus one? It does not. Okay. And if that checks the six, you would be BAC flat-footed. Is or KAC? This is, uh, piercing is kinetic. All right. So that'll actually hit. Yay. That's two whole damage. I thought it was plus three. What? What? Is it a trick attack? Oh, it's a d4. It's a d4. It's a roll to attack. It's it's just like... It's just like rogue sneak attack in that regard. Yeah, I was confused. Oh, good. About what you had said last time. So good. Oh, I'm ready. You hit him. He looks alarmed and upset. All right. We need some 1d6s all around again. You guys are going to get so tired of that. Eh. Ah-ha! Yar Yar! <laughs> what is your AC, Yar Yar? Yar Yar is behind boxes, but AC is kinetic or, or energy? Uh, energy, I believe. Energy is 14, kinetic is 15. All right, yeah, for sure. You're, you're safe. So one comes by, misses you. It was not, in fact, from this guy. But there's so much going on, it's hard to tell where exactly it came from. A chunk of the box right next to his ear pings off. <laughs> Tore, you're getting there. All right, um... So I think in the spirit of what, uh... What Alex did, my character is going to try to bull rush the box in front of him. All right, give me whatever the combat maneuver formula is and a strength check to see if you can move it. It's just a normal attack roll. Do that then. Okay, AC is, or uh, the fucking AC is just higher. Because Paizo hates combat maneuvers. Well, you just need to actually invest things in them. Oh wait, hang on, sorry, I missed my roll. I'm just gonna do the old fashioned way. 22. Well, you managed to grapple the shit out of that box. Give me a strength check. It's a 1d20 plus my strength modifier? Yeah. You know, bull rush is a thing, right? Yeah, he's bull rushing the box, but I'm trying to see if he can push the box. So he's managed the combat maneuver. Yeah, sure, whatever. <laughs> the, the boxes don't exactly have DCs. I mean, if the box's KC was 5, then he got... Well, he hit the box's KC with that 22. Well, I'm giving him the strength check. It's... Well, if he got the strength check, then he would move the box a total of 3 squares. Yeah, and he's going to move that box a total of 3 squares. He flattens the guy. Awesome. Squishy. Hold on, I'm drawing a shape. And this guy is now very squish. He's very squish. And I appears understand. to be very unconscious for his efforts. Are we to assume that there's like not a box in front of me now and the box is up there? Correct. Okay. Hold on, I got this. That box is no longer there. That box is now up there. So that's an open square for you all, and well done, you are now also up here, if I recall correctly. Right? No? You don't move with it? You just shove it that hard? Damn, Alex is nodding at me. That's really hard to push a box. Good job. Alright, and I guess that's it for my turn. Yep, yeah, Raz, your turn. Your uh... glory has been stolen by this gentleman beside you. How does that make you feel as a vest soldier? Uh, well, given that he got the uh, the honor of the first kill, he's really not too concerned about it. 
So okay. he he nods his thanks to Tora and then squeezes through the gap. Probably for a double move. Yep, double move. Up to this guy. Who now looks a little worried. Yeah, Raz is just grinning real big down at this guy. Corius. All right. Some shit no, I know. Going on. Yeah, lots of shit going on. I know I saw these guys. Would I be able to roll anything to try to identify? Like, are they a gang? Culture. I think yeah. it's culture. Oh yeah, there's that whole knowledge thing, yeah. huh? Not bad, plus five. I should probably try to roll that at some point, too. Alright, hold on. I gotta find where this is a little bit later in the book. We need to get up. All right, so you're basically able to glean that, judging from the general apparatus, they do seem to have some identifying markers. Like, the guys on this side are wearing a little bit of red. The guys on these side are wearing, you know, more grays and blacks. And... So, but not blue? <laughs> no, they are not the Crips and the Bloods. No, no, not quite. Well, I think the visors... You never know. But anyways, so just judging from the fact that they do seem to be marking themselves through color, uh, it is very likely to opposite gangs. Although, what these gangs may be, you're unsure, you're, they're unfamiliar to you. So it's possible that they're just local. Noted. I was hoping to get a little bit more, but you know, that's fine. Um, I see that there's a desk over there. Trying to take care of what can I do? Are you talking about this? Yeah. Alright, so this is an info desk, so lots of holograms, but it is in fact a semicircle desk. All these guys are way too fucking far away. I don't appreciate this. Alright. I'm gonna come up and over. This way. There we go. I'm gonna go over here, kind of put my back against that box, and then cast Energy Ray at this guy. And I will use Cole. Sorry, which guy? The guy that's squished between the box and. Oh no, he's dead! Yeah, he's Shit. already out. He's passed out at the very least. He doesn't seem to be kicking much. <laughs> Alright, can I uh, hit that guy there? Which guy? Where? The guy that's... I imagine so. Okay, I'm gonna daze him. Do it up. He's dazed. Ah, his mind will be buzzing, Raz. That was the guy right in front of me, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Um, I would say give me one d sixes, but I don't actually need them because he's dazed. Well done. <laughs> Shut up. You're up. Okay. Um. You will pull out his taser and then uh, redirect his thing at this guy. Uh, the one above. Oh, okay, sorry. I see. You moved the thing. All right, perfect. You can't tease him, from there, can you? No, I'm just drawing my weapon. Okay, okay, just making sure. Uh, technically, I could. Just one range really? coming out. Really? Damn. Right. Range weapons are pretty far. I didn't realize you could tase someone from that far. I'm used to like little tasers with like little strings <laughs> that shoot out three feet. Uh, I have expected you to. The way it's described, it seems more like a little ball of electricity. 
That's awesome. The pulse caster, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yar yar. Are the other sides still shooting? Yeah, people are still shooting. Uh, let's see. 5, 10, 15, 20, 20, 30. 5, 10, 15, 20, 30. Um, if I was to make an actual, like, full-on run, not just double move, but a run, could he run towards the kiosk and leap over it? I don't know. Can he? I'm asking our lovely, merciful, fun-loving GM. Who are you talking about? <laughs> Uh, is it mechanically sound, or is there some fudging in there? That's it, a legitimate question on rules. I have no idea. It, it might be a little fudging, combining a jump with an actual run run. Uh, it's probably under the acrobatic skill, whether it's... Yeah, make me an acrobatic type thing, and then you can. Okay, so Yarya is going to hop down from this cart, and he's going to pell-mell dash, like losing any dexterity bonuses he has to AC, and he's going to try to... acrobatics. And he's going to try to leap over this thing. And whether or not he face plants or not is another question. Probably okay. Hey, look, you did it. You can make it over the desk, and that's it. You're just in the middle of the desk. Yeah. Or on the desk, or you know, whatever it is. He leaps behind the desk and uh, crashes into the side of it with a loud, loud tumble as he ends up Head over heels. Perfect. You did it. That's it for you, right? <laughs> I did it. Ow. Alrighty. Uh, apparently, jumping is actually athletics, not acrobatics. But I don't know if that applies to this one. Well, you already rolled that, and I said he could do it. So it applies now. We'll play loosey goosey with the rules for a while. We can get all rules lawyery on each other, you know, in three weeks when Mark and Dan have both systematically memorized the system. <laughs> three weeks? Probably about okay, a week. Okay, next week, okay? <laughs> Give me them 1d6. I got you. All right, so he's going to start shooting. Um, and then actually moving out from where they are. Jumping their way past civilians, etc. That guy's followable, but off the map, technically. Okay, you're up. All right. I am going to double move over here and take cover okay. behind this box. Razavakarash bullet tooth. You know, you stopped doing that for a minute. Did I was I? worried. Yeah, you missed like one or two rounds of it. Damn. I'm pretty sure I got it every time on the initiative. It's just in between. Shaking its head, but now I'm gonna have to watch the stream to find out if I'm right or not. I remember you missing one. Anyway, um, <clears throat> Raz is gonna punch this guy in the face. Hopefully. Worked last time. Uh, maybe. What type of base is that against? Uh, kinetic. You miss! Is that including your plus one? Uh, no, actually, so it's it 13. It does, it, it still misses. I figured. Dishonor. And Corius. Okay, guy's no longer dazed. Give myself a nice little, there we go. Move out here, point my finger at him, and shoot a ray of cold at him. Okay. Wow. Wow. 
that that stuff beside him really cold. Good thing I didn't use fire or electricity. It's, it's a cold container now. Oh, Curious Mist. She's not very proficient in this battle thing. All right, so he's going to turn around and try to shoot our best friend right in the fucking face. That does provoke. Provoking. But he doesn't have very many options. Didn't bring a melee weapon? That doesn't matter. I'm really bad at life. Wow. Apparently he hasn't joined the uh, the world of the Cessuses. <laughs> that's a, that's a different well, game. I forgot about that, and he already has his gun out, so he's going to try to shoot this guy. What is your EAC? 16. He hit! Yay. First and you lot. take this many. Okay. That's... Right into your shield, so the blue one. Stamina. Alright, I'm fine. So, I mean, you're still a little alarmed. Well, yeah, he shot me in the chest with, what was it anyway? A gun. Oh, uh, thank you for that. Laser pistol gun. Okay, so it's fire damage. Yeah. Alright, well, Raz kind of snarls in pain and then resolves to punch him really hard next time. And what does Shut Up do? Uh, he's going to continue his get him on him, and then he's going to try and shoot him. Hey! That... Uh, oh, wait. Make sure I get all the right bonuses on here. And penalties. There we go. Wow, he hit... For one non-lethal electricity damage. That is adorable. Shut up may be my favorite character. Mostly because I see him in my head as a little guppy puppy dog. Give her the, the images from StarCrafts, if you ever watched that. Oh! I've watched the World of Warcraft versions of those. They're adorable. I should watch the StarCraft ones. Alright. Well done, shut up. You hit. There you are. I was thinking that... Uh, icon looked a lot like the cat for the um, hunter. It's the Zergling. So it looks like this one's running away, right? Yep, they're fleeing. They or they appear to be fleeing. At the very least, they're heading towards Exus. Is it just that one guy left? Well, there was. There's another one guy. in the bottom too. Yeah, there's another guy who's shooting from down here, and he's kind of bailing out. He's technically off the map, but you know, I ran out of map. Yarger is going to raise both hand guns in his hands and just run after him, screaming and yelling and caterwauling. Bottom left. <laughs> wow. As this small little rodent with, with Jewel just flying off of his loose jowls as he's running pell-mell, both guns held high in the air as he goes, goes chasing after this guy. And so you guys are keeping track of your charges and your weapons, yeah? Yep. Oh, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I yeah, have yeah. full charges in my fists. <laughs> the the pistols yeah. we've been shooting have like 20 charges you, each. You say that, but the later level fists actually do have charges. Mine will never. <laughs> yeah, I've had like two shots and one shot from the other. I'm just making sure, as a general rule, y'all are watching it's all, here. It's all good. In Starfinder, it actually does matter. And... So this guy continues to flee, the guy up top here. He continues to flee and, you know, essentially disappears into the crowd as far as... Because no one's chasing him. Um, the guy Yar Yar is chasing, uh, looks around, extremely startled that anyone is daring to chase him. This was not what he was expecting. And continues to book it, dodging around stuff. Uh, 
Okay, good. Again, we're out of map, so we'll deal with that when we get to your turn. Tore. Okay, did I see the guy to the left of me flee? Oh or yeah, you watched him flee, but okay. he's gone around the corner um, and taken a double move action since, so... Okay, All you know well, is he's run this way. Right. All right, well, I decide to chase after Yari or since I can see him. So I'll double move here, and that's my turn. Razivakaresh Bullet Tooth. If you think I'm ever going to get tired of this, you're wrong. Uh, all right, let's punch him. Yes, this is right. Is it though? Because it's KAC, right? So no, it's Is that the same round. as last time? Oh yeah. yeah. Exactly the same. <laughs> Though he been. misses. <laughs> Corius. And we just need him to shoot back in AO and get a 10 this time. I yep. think you need to cool off. Hey, you hit him. Now we've established that the puns actually work. It's true. <laughs> Tons are at least a plus five to hit. Got it. I'll keep that in mind. You know, she was just trying to make a joke. She's not sure if it actually worked. Oh, no. No, no. You have taught uh, Raz a valuable lesson today, and he will remember this forever. Forever. Uh, yep, that's about it. Alrighty. All right, his turn. He's going to, again, uh, attempt to shoot this lovely lizard man in the face. And which provokes, by the way. Did you roll the same thing again? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally yeah. hit you. Are we stuck in a time loop? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we'll be screaming down the corridors forever. Hey, Aww. you actually hit him, though. I mean, he still hits you, but... You also hit him, and he hits you for two! Alright, I'm still fine. Alright. Shut up, you see this going down. Uh, same thing as last time. Continuing to maintain, and then... Phew. You missed this time, unfortunately. Any moves or anything? Uh, it's a move action to keep the... Get him on him. Oh, okay. Yeah, you are. So we're off the map at this point. Is Yargar yes, within... Yes, we've moved to Theater of the Mind. Is shooting distance? Uh, he will be about 60 feet out from you. Okay, so we'll take a negative two on this. Okay. Uh, is there any uh, obstacles, clutter, people, nooks, anything that he could duck behind briefly? There is generally people, boxes. I mean, it's just... Basically, you can just assume the same sort of environ that you're currently seeing now just, okay you know more of it as you guys move into dock 93 oh wait sorry it's on the same side so dock 92 okay so uh he's instead of chasing after he's going to duck into a corner really quick so his prey uh, loses track of him and he's going to try to take a shot without him seeing it okay you see a magical trick shot all right what's this against again so you're not, plus you, its CR. You're, you're not rolling anything. It's just 20 plus its CR. So I'm assuming it's no, no, CR. no. I meant the, the hit. The semi auto KAC. Uh, it's piercing is kinetic. Oh, okay. And then if he's flat footed, that's a minus 2 to AC. Okay. Yeah, well, it hits. Okay, so he takes 6 damage. Oh, excuse me. Uh, 5, 6, 8 damage. Excuse me. Looking at critical for some reason. He looks very upset. But you have hit him. And just from down the corridor, he just hears a, a cackle. <laughs> Yager, come catch you! He did not sign on for this shit. And he continues bolting. Another, let's see, 60 feet away. 
I don't know how much chase you gave him, so I don't know what that gap would be now. It was 60 feet before, 60 feet additional. Since so Yoyar possibly stopped... Possibly 120 feet away. Yeah, assuming since Yoyar stopped moving, I'm going to assume he got away. Okay. He certainly did not get away unscathed. Tore. All right. Um... That rat dove around and is chasing this guy. You kind of kept an eye on him right up until kind of the end when he started diving between boxes, but you were free to keep chasing in that direction. Yeah, you know, I'm going to chase in that direction. That's a double move. Okay. Do you actually but catch up? This guy is, what is he, 120 feet away from you or so? Yeah, he's, he's, uh, you at this point would catch up to Yar Yar. Right. Um, and you'll stumble into him. I don't think he's trying to hide from you. So you kind of see him on the side of the box he's on. Um, but the other guy is now well away. So I wouldn't have any indication of where he went or, uh, any side yeah, of him? Probably not at this distance in an environment like this. <laughs> I pray he's bleeding now. I can follow. Take your time. That is true. He is bleeding, so... Well, I was going to say, do I see any indication of where he went? Like, uh, people pushed out of the way blood anything? Or is that a perception roll? I thought it'd be a perception roll. But you double move to get here, and I think... Is that an perception action? Rolls, I think an active perception roll is still a move action. Is it not? You have to clarify with someone else. Uh... Yeah, it was a general question for the group. Um, uh, no, no. Okay. a lot of GMs play loose with that one, depending on how detailed of a search you do. Yeah, well, I'll say that it will require a move action next round, just because he was already 60 feet out when he got shot so badly in the first place. Okay. So just next round, if you want to keep looking for him and tracking him, we'll move into that after. Okay. Wrath of Akaresh, bullet tooth. Uh, it says perception does not usually involve an action. Okay. Well, you could then, in fact, make a perception check at any point. Okay, you want to wait till my next turn, then? You can do it now if you want. Okay. Oh, oh wait. Uh, <laughs> it's unclear. You're like, wow, he is so fucking gone. I've never seen anyone so far away in my life. He's gone forever. Disappeared off the <laughs> station. Well done, Yar Yar. See... Clearly, I shouldn't have tried to be polite, and I should have just waited until I could have made the pun, and then rolled. Yeah, yep. you didn't make the pun. Look at you. You rolled a one. Just trying to be polite. Y'all were talking. <laughs> yeah, don't be polite. I was just like, fuck it. I'll just take my turn real fast, and then we won't have to worry about it. Sorry, if you're up. Since it worked so well last time, let's see if we can dissolve the situation. And this time the raid's gonna be acid. Okay. Against. Yeah, that'll hit. Well done! Funs again! <laughs> this guy's looking not so good. He's looking like he was panicking, like he really wants to get out of where he is. You can give up. Um, he is going to. Say. Just screw it. What does it take to try to shove past someone? Tumble check, acrobatics. Or actually, no, he's just going to try to jump over the boxes. Then I guess that would be a athletics check. Would that provoke? Because he's not... Uh... He disengaged. Uh, if he's worth withdrawing, it won't. Can you withdraw and jump over shit at the same time? It's part of the regular move, yeah. It's part of movement. Excellent. Wouldn't he have to, if he's going over stuff, wouldn't he have to go up and then over? So that'd be two spaces of movement that he's still in my reach. Hey. Oh, I was just slipping through the two of them, too. I, I don't know, man. I, I have no idea what's going on anymore. <laughs> Do any of us? Not really. No, not usually. He sneaks away from you. What are you gonna Howard. do then? Shut up, you're up. Uh, alright, I'm that, that keep works firing. way too well coming right after Alex. <laughs> oh, wait, That's he's true. out of... 
things out of reach. Eh. Well, Shut Up is not particularly bloodthirsty, so... He's going to move around... He's going to double move around there and start looking at this guy's body. Alrighty. Look so down, double stare move at it for a while. Yep. Alright, well, he appears to be just a generic, fairly... Uh, actually, can I attempt kind of culture? You may. Um, you get pretty much the same thing as Liz's Corius does, which is just to say that they're wearing some things that are fairly stereotypical as gang markers, uh, colored bandanas, uh, very, some of them very jaily looking tattoos, <laughs> you know, the non-high quality ones. Uh, but other than that, does not appear to be wearing any sort of name tag, and you're unsure exactly where, like, at the very least, this is not a gang that is so populous on the media that uh, the packed worlds are all familiar with them. So, okay. again, you suspect they might be local. Unless any of you were from Absalom, but I don't think anyone mentioned that, so. Nope. There you are. Um, just kind of snorting. He's going to start turning, heading back, taking his time, getting back to the main hangar bay. He's going to let his, let this guy go. He's made him bleed. He's happy. Right. Are you going to say anything to Tore, who's there with you? Uh, he'll, he'll bleed out well enough. Um, there's more fun back at the hangar. So you're just going to double move back? Yeah, I'm just, he's taking his time, though. So he's just right. going to kind of stroll back. That guy is going to continue to do what that guy is doing. Hooray! I will take one last perception check to see if uh, I can make any sense of where he went. It... Wow, you just consistently roll under a 10 on those. Yeah, I'm going to start heading back. Out of, just oh, pure out of character curiosity. What's your survival like? Uh, survival skill? Yeah. Uh, minus one. Awesome. Same as the perception. Oh, uh, yes. And not a very wise race. <laughs> Alright, so I head back into the main hangar, at least as close as I can get with my movement action. Yeah, you can get a boat on par with Yar-Yar, where, where Yar Yar is. Come on, keep up, keep up. Razavak Resh Bullet Tooth. Um, well, the guy that I was trying to punch in the face uh, is booking it, and I really don't think I can catch him. How was that attitude? Yeah. Well, no, I'm I'm slow, so. Why are you slow? Because I'm wearing heavy armor. Oh, okay. Um. Can I just squeeze through here? Or no? I mean, you're a pretty bulky guy, and those boxes are kind of next to each other. Try to jump them the way that other guy did. Move them out of the way. It's okay, I'll just go. You, you could probably just move them, but that's going to take a lot of time. I'm going to be here on a double move. Still trying to roll up on this that's guy. That's a wall. You just, you just climbed a wall. Oh, oh, okay. Sorry, that was my mistake. No, it's all good. Uh, well, in that case, sure, I guess I'm trying to jump past these. Why not? Athletics. You jump. You jump over them. Yay, how much movement does that cost me? Any? So. That's even better. Feel free to scream corrections at me at any point, anybody who knows the rules better than me. I'm going to be here, and uh, as part of my movement, because I have one bab, I'm going to pull out my light reaction cannon. That sounds really scary. Yeah, it's a heavy weapon. For you. Alright, Corey's is going to move over here. 
No, I don't remember. Are there like cover penalties? Yep. Range weapon? Soft cover is still a thing. Okay. I think I'm good here. Yeah. So she's doing that calm walking thing where she's uh like keeping her eye on him, but slowly walking over here. And when she gets there, she's just gonna reach out her palm and shoot another energy raid at him. Okay. Um, this time we're gonna do electricity. Okay. You hit him. This guy is limping. He's still standing. He's terrified. You do have an option to become static. To become static. He doesn't like the sounds of that. Uh, well, I'm sure if Raz piped up and said something like, Surrender and we won't kill you horribly. That's really not going to persuade him either. <laughs> well, are you going to try? To be persuasive? No, to say that at all. Or, or, sure. Or intimidating. He, he does that. That is done. He throws his weapon. Raz looks a little Gets bit disappointed. Ground, assumes the position. He looks like he's maybe been arrested before. Uh, Raz looks a little disappointed. He just kind of says, You weren't supposed to give up, coward. He really did shock you. Oh. So I'm just going to assume that whoever made her uploaded a pun database. <laughs> This was her, her human integration training. Like, she just found, like, one of those books from, like, the fourth grade. No, she just found a thesaurus. <laughs> and they've been misusing it ever since. <laughs> but everyone thinks she's just really punny. She's just confused. I love it. Please tell me that's canon now. It's gonna have to be upset myself up horribly, but it's gonna have to be. Oh, that's amazing. Alrighty. So, shut up. Um, I guess we'll start. I actually think that's everybody now. I think we've cleared out the combat. Rifle through this guy's pockets. Excellent. And we will turn off initiative. Everybody kind of reconvenes. And you rifle through his pockets. And what you find, in fact, is a cred stick. Yeah, sure, why not? Uh, 150 creds on it. How much? You to, do the same to the other guys. You faded out a little there. How much? 150. No, I, I got it. You don't need to repeat it. 150! Oh my god, is someone actually taking Quartermaster other than me? Oh my god, this is beautiful. I was curious how this was going to go. This is like between Dan and Mark. Which one of them will reign supreme on the loot tracking? You are more than welcome to, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I could use I, a break. Should... Yeah, I was gonna say. Actually, I should make a handout for loot, shouldn't I? Probably. Did he have a gun? Oh yeah, sorry. You just you said pocket, so you know I told you it was in his pocket. Well. Oh. I mean, yes, he did have a gun, and in fact, I believe a flight suit and a club, uh, and there's a battery in his thing with only like there are five charges are... left. Batteries are pretty useful. Wait, batteries yeah. have charges? I thought they were just... No, the, the batteries have charges. The uh, yeah, full they... battery has 20 charges. This oh, one's got okay. like, not that much left. Uh, so this, that one, we'll say, has five. We can roll up 1d10 and figure that shit out for each of them. Um, okay, it's got a club as well. Oh, sorry, it's a... Azimuth laser pistol. Let me just copy paste this. That was the other thing that I meant to prep and didn't. So each of these had all of that?
Each of them had that. Each managed... of the ones that are on the ground. Alright, we've managed to take out five of them, right? One got away? One, two, uh... three... Looks like four, including the prisoner. I'm assuming we're yeah. stripping him bare too, though, right? Yeah, I'm assuming you're taking his shit. And, of course, finally... The dwarf. Guards do come. Uh, be before... I mean, do they come immediately, or do we have a minute? They come pretty quick. You probably have, like, three rounds before they're going to show up. So I think All we right. take a guy and strip him. Ready, go. Go, your pounces. Uh, oh. uh, if, he, if he has time after uh, stripping the one body, he's going to uh, go, You're not my friend! Why did you unalive my friend? To, to the guy who's alive still? Yeah. Uh, he's just going to snarl and Bit on the ground beside him. Uh, Rez is go or Rez is going to uh, to snarl back at him, still holding his reaction cannon as he loots all of the things in this guy's pockets. Can I uh, try to intimidate him into answering? Y'all are more than welcome, but you guys got three rounds, so keep it quick. That is only what? Eighteen seconds. Eighteen seconds. While pawing over his person, Yar Yar is going to, to look at him with a slightly drooly mouth and just looking over to, to Raz with a wink. It's like, can I eat him if he doesn't talk? I'm really hungry. I really want to eat him. All right. So I want an intimidation check. I know Tori wanted to get in on this. Wait, were there five, those... or five or four of them? One, two, one, two, three, four. Four. Yeah, there's four if you count your captured guy. I mean, the two got away. I was thinking I missed, got the box mixed in. Yeah, that's the box. <laughs> um, I would love to make this a bluff check if possible. Um, okay, you can do that, but hold on. Let's see. Uh, Tori, what do you do to intimidate this guy and trying to get him to answer? Well, I'm still holding my weapon, so I want to walk up to him and uh, threaten him if he doesn't answer. All right. And Raz is doing nothing. Well, no, and I'm Shut taking his with... stuff. Okay, Raz is taking his shit. Well, you guys are body. always. <laughs> well, you you're threatening to eat him. You're threatening to shoot him. And Shut up is asking for answers. Yep. Shut up. Yours just... automatically fails because he is not open to diplomacy. I need a, I guess, a bluff from Yaria to see if you can convince him that he's eating them. And Tori, let's see your intimidate roll. There we go. Yes. Got everyone's thing sorted out. <laughs> the drooling, torn ear looking rat is well aware of his people's reputation amongst the other humans. Playing it up to the key as some rabid, barely sentient creature. All right. So he looks legitimately alarmed. And... He's just going to say, wrong place, wrong time. That doesn't sound like an answer to me. Does that mean I can eat him now? Raz just says yes. Yeah, Whether or not he... of, you stand in front of a gun, you get shot. I swear. I tell you, I heard to go ahead and do it. It sounds very logical. All right, now at this point, you're, you're gonna fix him, real right? At this point, we now have horrible. guards coming in. <laughs> you guys are horrible. <laughs> and the guards come in. They start sweeping in. Um. Civilians are nattering on at them and kind of mobbing them, um, but they're marching over to, you know, the guys who have guns drawn, all of you. I don't have a gun out. Except for the android. <laughs> I'll put, <laughs> I'll put mine away. We would have had to put it away in order to loot him. It's a two-handed weapon, so I would have had to. Well, yeah, you just sticks both. Sticks shut both. up, you're a vest. Racism. <laughs> That's fair, actually, yeah. No, that, that actually makes perfect sense, because I constantly have weapons on the ends of my fucking hands. <laughs> there, it just shoves... Um, 
two fists into his mouth, leaving his guns there. All right, so as the battle winds down, station security finally arrives, uh, obviously too late to join in the fight. Uh, once it's realized that there are casualties as well as, you know, wounded prisoner, uh, the emergency medical services follow shortly after, you know, quick radio in, and they come in and assist the injured. If any of you pipe up that you are particularly hurt, they will see to you as well. Although I don't think anyone actually got hurt. Technically, I did. I don't know if stamina... Is that stamina hurting? Yeah, I think it's still health. It's just your kind of. level of grit and able to push through it. Yeah, think, health is think when you start to slow down. Think of it as like a weird type of temp pinpoint. Uh, so yeah. do, do any of the, the police appear to be in charge? Well, I mean, they all just kind of look like spaceport security. All right, uh, well, Shadup will go up to one of them go and just practically wailing, go, it was horrible! There were bad men, and they were shooting at other bad men, and then they analyzed our friend! And can, can, can you fix him? Um, so the security personnel will send over some medical personnel, and they will take Shut Up to go and see the friend. However, when they arrive, it is fairly clear that this gentleman is now deceased, and they inform Shut Up that his friend is now deceased. Uh, Shut up is very distraught over this. Um, they also ask you for I, his identification. I was, I was gonna ask him if his beard was itchy. Now I'll never know. Uh, they give you a pretty strange look. Um, and security goes around. They try to get everyone organized as best they can, uh, gathering up witnesses, which includes you people. Are any of you trying to sneak away, or are you all being cooperative with security? Cooperative. Cooperative. More cooperative than they want. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> Shut up replays every event word for word in a very dramatic sequence, I'm sure. Um, is there anything in particular that you note to them in particular that isn't just a recount of how you remember the encounter going? Uh, Corius will describe the different colors from the gangs. Okay. Uh, Shadup will try and describe the ones that got away. Yar Yar will try to describe the bleeding wound he left in his side. <laughs> Excellent. Was it round? It, was, it wasn't a clean shot. It's it been on the side. It's probably pretty ragged. Probably hurts a lot. All right. Um, despite initial suspicion the security seemed to have on you, considering they all rounded on you pretty quick, um, you have enough witnesses around who can attest to you just coming off the ship and intervening that you're quickly dismissed as, you know, being part of the problem. Whatever, Alex is correcting me. You know what I mean if I said something wrong. You're not a problem. They're like, ah, yes, good folks stepping in. Uh, Shadup will ask them if they know where the Starfinders are, because they should probably bring their unalived friend back there. Um, well, the medical people say you're not actually allowed to take the body with you. But, but how else will we get back to his other friends? Well, we're going to take him, and we will inform their friends. However, if you perhaps know them, you could inform them before we do. Um, what, what, what about a bounty? Uh, gang members' shootings must be something worth taking them out. This is station security and all that. Yes. So as soon as as soon as the little rad man says something like that, the vest perks up and starts nodding along and like, yeah, 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 bounty, bounty, one of those, right? Definitely one of those. These guys are are big name criminals. Uh, the station security look at you and go, well, those are the level twenty one crew, and those are the downside cakes. Downside King. I can pronounce things. They, uh... Granted, they're problematic, but I don't think anyone's got a bounty on their heads. The Vesk immediately goes back to looking disinterested. I take it we're on level 94? 
No, you're just in the, uh, you're on the arms, which is a section of Absalom Station. Right, okay. Absalom Station. Right, I've got a handout for this. And you can click that picture and make it massive. You yes. guys are on those outer arms, so... You see the things that stick out? Like, we're gonna call them loosely star points? Those, those, those are the areas you're in. So what Prize level are those on? <laughs> the the only thing that actually has levels, I think, is the spike, which is down below. Otherwise, and these are just referred to the arms. Do the numbers go up as you go down, or down as you go up? That's a good question that I don't think is answered. Does anyone else realize that this is shaped exactly like a Wayfinder amulet? I think they go oh, yeah. down as you go down the spire. Probably but not a coincidence. This is just a bay. So this is Bay 94. Right next door is Bay 96, and on the other side is Bay 92. And on the other side, you're going to run into Bay 93. Uh, it's built around the star, so star stone, like the entire station is so i think the idea was to make the station like a wayfinder and the star stone like an iron stone <laughs> wait does that mean we can go over to the star stone and become gods uh you could try there's some rumors that go around about that which i also have prepared but we're not there yet but you're not gang, there yet gang level two 21 does that mean oh 21 Okay. Yeah, so I, it's the level 21 crew, is I, what they had said. I'm putting stuff in the part one handout. Yes, so I did put part one, um, and then once we're done part one, we'll make a new handout for part three, or sorry, part two, and then another one for part three. That way notes aren't incredibly long, and you guys can refer back appropriately. Oh, cool. I'm taking notes too, so I'll just copy-paste it in one. Ribbon. Yeah, you guys can all edit that and You guys whatnot. go ahead and do that. Mark's just kicking back. He's like, yeah, responsible of humans. Um, level 21 crew? How does one level up? I think you have to go down a level to go up a level. Yeah, I think so too. I think like ground level would be like the higher tier level. And then I think you could higher numbers as you go down in levels. <sighs> that, 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 but if does one that goes mean... down, don't they go down? Does that mean Epsilon Station has a basement? Yes. Technically. Yeah. And ghost floors. Um, anyways. So, you guys have wiped this out. Uh, security has taken, whatchamacallit, we'll say that medical personnel have Take in your friend. They do bag up some of his personal effects, which I don't believe anybody searched for. Nope. nope didn't okay. want to take the time. I, I will ask them, look. though, if he has anything uh, relating that could tell us where to go or who to contact. Alrighty. I, I will be even... He w Shut up will graciously offer to to bring the things where they need to go if that would be helpful. Sorry, what was that? Uh, Shut up will even graciously offer to to bring his personal effects to wherever they need to go if that would be helpful. Alrighty. Um. All right. So he really just had a computer. Um, but when asked if they had anything that relates to them, um, did you guys tell them that you're, you know, well, you're right, I'm gonna assume you do, that you tell them that you're in some way connected to this fellow? If nothing else, I'm pretty sure one of you would have ID'd the body for them. Oh yeah, no, the, the Vesk would have told them, uh, as much as they absolutely needed to know in as few words as possible. Perfect. Um, and I'm sure... Shut up filled in the rest? <laughs> he, he would have used as many words as possible. Um, so they'll let them know that... Uh, each of their names and a description of each of you guys was actually 
up on the screen of the computer and not much else. Um, however, there is an address which, after they kind of squint at it a little bit, they say, I think that's the lore spire. Can Curious take a closer look at the computer? Uh, they tell you no. Really? I'm sure she could be be, be very helpful with it. Uh, uh, shut up, unfortunately, to... you are not I, I authority. Can't, I can't diplomatize them? You could probably try. Bam. Alright. Well, one of them looks at it, shrugs, and... Ah, uh, well, alright. I mean, your faces are on it. Here you go. Hey. Um, and they hand over the computer. Cool. Are they sitting there watching me? Or Yes, they are watching. Okay. This is a dead man <laughs> thing. And they, are, they are professionals. This They're is probably... not Pathfinder. You can't just kill people and make money off of it. Yeah, you say that, but we just killed a whole bunch of people and took all their guns. And you had to do it before security got there. <laughs> yes, but this you is know what? no Starfinder. She wouldn't know any better, so she's just going to start hacking into the computer with them sitting there watching her. Fortunately for you, they're all medical personnel and not, you know, technologically advanced spies, so they have no idea what the fuck you're doing. They just think you're tinkering. I mean, unless you're physically pulling this shit apart. No, 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 no. Yeah, they can... have no idea what you're doing then, so you're good. Yeah. Just start looking through it. If, uh, if I get... Like blocked in any way, I'll hack through it. Do I need to make a hacking check? Yes. All right, I just gotta double check. I believe with the kit, I get a plus two. Or I just don't get negatives with the kit. You just don't get negatives. I have a an engineer. It's the same. Oh wait, hold on. What kit do you have? The hacking kit. Okay, then with that one, yes. With the specialized kit, you do get a plus two. I'm sorry, I was thinking of the mechanics um, thing. I figure what the fuck it's called. Okay, so that would be me at plus ten. Wow, I rolled like shit. Alright, well you do see that there's a little hidden module in there. Um, but it's not very well protected. It's just kind of buried. Um, but what you find there is literally just the information that was already up on the screen. That's oh. just the origin of those files. Okay. <laughs> so um, however, you do get the little bit more of information that doesn't require hacking. It's just kind of there up, you know, in his email is there is the name Chiskisk and the address, which the medical personnel had already identified as being something called the Lore Spire. Uh, not that that name is included there, it's just an address, but medical guy ID'd it for you. Can you type out the name? There's no way I'm going to spell Chiskisk right. They'll take it, bag it back up, and be on their merry way with the body. What are you all doing? You've Wait. all just had a very bonding moment of beating people up together. I hope the rest of the Pathfinders are like this. This was fun! What's a Pathfinder? Starfinders. Pathfinders. Hard habit to break. Uh, so Raz kind of looks around at all of you. Uh, giving you a, a, a newfound uh, look of respect. And he nods and says, You're all right. And that's about as uh, sentimental as he gets before he goes, All right, let's get out of here. And starts leading the way to the lore spire. Coming, coming. Really? That up will follow along. How do you read an address in Absalom Station? Well, naturally, we're going to go to the middle of it, ask somebody there, and then go from there. 
All right, how do you find your way to the middle? Who the fuck knows? No, I'm one, kidding. One, I have, uh, one second. I have one of the one second. Which will take me directly to the middle. What's the compass behind you? The, the star compass. It takes you to the star stone. Okay, I don't think that you want to go directly to there because mostly this thing is going haywire there because you're already there, essentially. In uh... that case, as I was unaware of that until <laughs> just now, we're going to ask somebody how to get to the uh, Yar Yar will take a second to scamper over to the information kiosk and start pushing buttons. All they have, right. Do they have he, flyers? He actually, he actually does know how to use computers, so... There is, is, there, is there one a... for, like, Space Disneyland? <laughs> there should be a Space Disneyland. Would you here. like to know more? There is now. There is now. There's totally an amusement park in the eye. All right. So you guys come to the information terminal. And there's all sorts of little brochures and welcome to Absalon Station. And the nice little hologram lady head is like, welcome. Every once in a while, and some adverts are playing along the bottom, and just the generic elevator tunes and friendly introduction things. Is like, well, on this level, you can find our latest new spa and <laughs> all this sort of thing. But there is a general map on the kiosk. Yar Yar just ignores the hologram altogether and just like swats at it like an annoying thing. Like, hey, we could go away, go away. And he starts just talking to the hologram. Tapping away at the, the keyboard, trying to get information directly. The um, hologram is trying to use not very talkative back, but she does keep talking about the spas on floor three <laughs> and how at the eye you can find some of the nicest hotels in all the packed worlds. I oh, attempt to use the spot. computer to get the map to zoom in to show a path to where we need to go. I mean, you keep pressing buttons. Are you are you talking while you're saying this? Like, do you does Yar Yar talk while he hacks? Oh, uh, sure. You know, press yeah. buttons. Yeah, well, I don't know because... if we buy, if we bypass this this array, and, and then we come over here and configure this variable and declare this system, and we use this function and declare this. Um, while he's doing talk. that, I will talk to the hologram. I'm looking for Laura Spire. Do you know where that All is? All right. So. The hologram picks up on the keyword, and the lore spire uh, pops up on the screen. It's a big actual complex, uh, much like a school campus, but you know, sci-fi space campus, <laughs> as everything here is sci-fi space, insert mundane thing here. Um, and it shows a general route in the, you know, the really oversimplified Google Maps way, it shows one of those with a little dotted line, but you really have no way to take that information. But again, there are brochures there, and you can probably mark the path if anyone happens to have a pen. Could I download the information onto my computer? Probably. Yar Yar could too while he's already tinkering back there, but I don't know if he's got a thing out to download it to. I, I will download the information to my computer. I have Wi-Fi equivalent of one mile, so... <laughs> yeah, sure, that sounds like something you could probably do at a hologram kiosk desk. It doesn't tell me you can't. <laughs> it doesn't tell me you can. As I open up my computer, my artificial intelligence from my computer will pop up. And I'll start talking to it. Look, Yaya's done it! He got the information to the Android. Uh, no yeah, computer now can the, beat me. Uh, idea has entered Shadup's mind. Uh, he will. He will ask. You know, in case we get separated, what's everyone's com number? Oh my god, that's adorable. Like everybody exchange phone numbers. Assuming everyone has a com. Yep. Yes. Doesn't armor come with one? No, I don't think no. so. No. It costs like three credits though. So if you didn't get it, I'm sure Allie will let you snag one. No, I saw them. I just thought I saw uh, something about the armor. I no, think power armor, armor, maybe. Armor comes with um, like a spacesuit, basically. It, it yeah. protects you from all of the 
uh, ravages of space. Right, and like radiation. Like or light radiation. Yep. And uh, environmental anything, pretty much, unless it's super severe. But it doesn't have a comm in it, typically. But it doesn't take much to find one. Because as you exit docking bay 94 on your merry way to the lore spire, which is really where you were all headed to anyways, it's just now you don't have a lovely dwarven tour guide. Um, there are so many shops, kiosks, um, hotels, bars. restaurants, bars, bars, basically everything you could possibly imagine in a main tourist strip of a city, it is there, leaving the docking bays. Much like how an airport is really just a big super mall. This is even more so because it doubles as a city street. Um, so honestly, if you wanted to dive in, comm units are so common, you could go into the local convenience store and at least buy a temporary, you know, disposable one. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do that then. Perfect. Then, assuming none of you are being antisocial twats, you all can communicate with each other. Raz is a little bit reluctant to pass out his number to you fucking weebs, but, you know. <laughs> That's a slanderous term in best. It is, actually. It's also a slanderous term in English, but, you know. What is a weeb? All right. I think it's kind of like a geek. What's a How geek? Many you defeated four, essentially, right? Yeah, right. well, didn't we defeat five? Because surrendering is still defeating? No, no, the fourth was with the one that surrendered. Yeah. Well, oh, I mean, okay, running away is... Got away. So, I mean, yeah, I guess fleeing is technically also defeating. Are we not doing chapter-based XP? No, I want to actually try experience experience. I want to see what happens. I mean, if technically the ones up... that run away were defeated. If they're not facing us. This thing's pretty specific about certain points. Oh, okay. So I'm going to do it as a thing by thing. How many of you are there? Out of curiosity, is it possible to save him under any circumstances? Save who? The dwarf. No, he has the opposite of plot armor. He has plot death. Okay. He gets ganked round one every time. Yeah. In every time stream, too. And in every parallel universe. No matter what, that man dies at that exact moment in time. Um, mom. You guys all gain 160 experience. I've already divided it out. You get that. What do we need for next level? I have not looked that far, but you're not next level yet. In I fact, this is curious. one of the slowest leveling APs I've seen in my life, which is why I'm doing it as experience space. 1300 or 1500 or something, so we got a ways to go. Either way, by the end of the book, if you guys don't actually... When we hit the milestones, if you guys aren't those levels, I'll give you those levels. I just want to see if you guys can actually surpass those because of how fucking slow this goes! I don't think I've ever seen an AP of theirs that doesn't have the first book ending at level 4. This one ends at level 3. Yeah, they're trying to keep it combat light. Yeah, take, but, take I mean, time. this thing has story awards for everything. Like, it is combat light, it's just I'm confused why... I guess it's actually 10 pages shorter than most of their AP books, too. So I guess 10 pages short, one level short. Anyway, so you guys heading towards Lower Spire? Yes. Yep. Alrighty. We're sitting in the oh, elevator awkwardly. <laughs> I'm trying to skim ahead to where this was. As she does that, what kind of pizza do I want, guys? Oh, um, I no, need no, mushroom no. and spinach. Barbecue chicken? Like uh, Mexican pizza. What you do is you get hamburger meat on it. You also get black beans, onions, green peppers, red peppers. Uh, ideally, if you can, a little bit of feta. It's so fucking good. 
they don't the have one, beans. The, the, the one we thing. always get is avocado, artichoke, and pineapple. It's delicious. Ooh, that sounds good. That sounds sound like pizza. pizza. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So. The Lore Spire Complex, located in Absalom Station's ring sector. So if you look at that picture in between the spikes. Or, sorry, in between the, the arms, the little star arms in between those, there was a circle. That's where we're located. Um, is a campus with multiple buildings and rooms, though it's Big Spire is what people most associate with the Starfinder Society's headquarters. Upon your arrival, are you guys good to arrive or do we need to make any more stops on the way? No. When okay. do we get to eat? Oh, you're you're starving. starving. Well, then just. You want an antenna. Somebody's hungry, Although, somebody has to pee, somebody's tired. I was gonna say, you walk through some really populated places with lots of kiosks. I'm sure you could have snagged a corn dog on the way. I'm sure there's a couple times that someone has to stop and grab Curious and drag her along. Oh, don't you worry, the Vesk is not even subtle about just, nope, we're not stopping. No potty break. Um, anyways, upon your arrival, uh, you're greeted by a receptionist who asks you what you're doing here. It, it was, uh, we were here to join the Starfinders, but then the person that got sent to join us, uh, he got unalived, and it was rather horrible. Par pardon? Uh, Dur Duravar Creel, he got unalived when we arrived. Un unalived? Unalived? Our dwarf escort was killed in a gang war. We ended the war. Real? Duravar Creel? There's more yeah, than one? Yeah. We have many dwarves, but... My, my, come, come on in, hold on. I'll, I'll find you someone. So she goes and, you know, sets y'all down in the little waiting area. And goes and dashes off behind the desk. Um, eventually comes through and directs you up to the third floor. Elevator music. Do, 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 do. And after several minutes of waiting, uh, a functionary finally arrives and leads you to a cluttered but clean office deep within the complex. Anyone have any questions before we move on? When do we get our ship? We get a ship? The uh, functionary ignores everyone's comments as she doesn't understand what's going on. Oh, I do hope we get a big one. Raz is just practicing his really exasperated size. He gets a lot of practice with you guys. Alrighty. So, waiting in the office for the PCs is Chiskis, uh, a I'm member Chiskis. of the Starfinder's Council, identifiable by all of his fancy armor and symbols and badges all over him. Do we know what faction he belongs to? I would assume the Starfinders. No, no, he there are factions. Is... Factions uh, in the Starfinders. No. Oh, I didn't know that. You guys are unaware, and this book also does not tell me. Uh, technically, he's an elected leadership council. He's on the forum, so high up. And as Shut Up would know, Chiskisk is neither male nor female, but a host, the third of the sheer sex. And in case anybody really needed to know, and I'm rolling my eyes so hard as I say this that I think my eye sockets actually hurt, their pronouns are they, them, and themselves. Yep. <sighs> Tumblr. Pies are so inclusive, guys. <laughs> I don't get Anyways. it. Anyways. <laughs> Hello. They are seated behind a polished and unadorned plastic desk. Chiskis um, wears an understated business clothes and is nervously flexing their antenna from side to side which is a sheer expression of perplexity. Welcome! Is there, um, any, uh, anything I can get you? Drinks? Something to eat? Please, please, sit down. 
That, that sounds great. Uh, what have you got? All right. So just gets grabs out a tray of cups of water and processed protein wafers. Oh, snacks! Yar Yar takes a fistful of wafers and just crams them into one of his cheeks. So androids can eat, they don't need to eat. Okay. I think she would eat. Now, if I may ask, why did you come without an escort? Oh, he got unalived. It was very sad. Unalived? There was a gang. Uh, actually, if if, if uh, Shut Up is speaking to another Sheeran, it's pretty much going to be direct mental link, and he'll yeah. he'll reenact the scene in as much detail as he can manage. All right. Uh, so Chiskisk is clearly unpleased by that, and moves into an extremely long written thing that I shall now narrate for you. Oh, here, let me give you a picture of this guy first. Fancy. Is that the head, or is that a comb? I think it's a hat. It's a hat. Yeah. <sighs> He's like the... Or at least he looks pretty much identical to the iconic mystic. Yep, I noticed that too. They, really, I don't think they use different art for it. Really, anyway. You mean they do? Yeah, they do. <laughs> Use the correct pronoun. It does. They do. That beast there does. If you recall, I'm a Vess. We're allowed to be shitheads. We've been <laughs> shitheads since we met all of you. You were going to be such a bad influence on the poor android. Yes. Without a doubt. Excellent. Okay, now shh, shh, shh. I am sorry that I cannot welcome you to Absalom Station under better circumstances. I assure you that such attacks are not a daily occurrence, though I realize that it's likely a small comfort to you. By the way, he is doing this into your head. You know, how the Sheeran communicates telepathically. Yeah, they've gotten a crash course in that already. Yeah. <laughs> I am pleased that none of you were seriously hurt, but I do grieve for Duravor's death. He was a valued member of the society and a friend. May the Lady of Graves be kind in her judgment of his soul. Uh, he then bows his head momentarily and then looks up uh, with his eyes glittering. What puzzles me is the reason behind the attack. Uh, Chiska taps a few commands into their computer. Uh, according to the incident report just released by Station Security, two gangs were involved in the attack. The Downside Kings and the Level 21 crew. Gang wars are not uncommon on the station, but they usually confine themselves to the more lawless sectors like the Puddles. It's rare for street gangs to battle openly in public areas like the docks. I cannot help but wonder whether it all is as, is as it seems. There must be a reason why those two gangs were at Docking Bay 94 at that time, the time of your arrival, coincidentally. But was it a coincidence? Were you in Duravor just innocent bystanders caught in the crossfire or might you and he have been specifically targeted and if so why my understanding is that you are interested in becoming starfinders and since you are witness to the attack i would like to ask you to investigate the incident on behalf of the society okay. find out exactly what happened and why it may be a simple matter of being in the wrong place at the wrong time i have no doubt station security will rule it so but if Duravor was murdered, I would like to find justice for my friend. At the same time, this will give you the opportunity to demonstrate your own skills and abilities and show the society that you are worthy of the title Starfinder. Good luck. Does that mean we get a ship? Or guns? Or technological goodies? Uh, so Chiska kind of looks around at you all. I see you're already well armed. And as for a ship, you'll find that you will have no need of one investigating within the station. Aww. Very logical. Gaga looks very sad. Uh, Shut up, we'll pat him on the back and say, I'm sure we'll get a ship soon. If that'd make you happy. Uh, so Chiskis uh, tinkers around on his own computer again for a moment. And pipes up again. Uh, I've also transferred 200 credits 
each of your accounts. Consider it a signing bonus and to also cover some of your expenses. And might I recommend you get settled here before you get too deep into any investigations. Have you found a place to stay yet? No, do you know any places that are good? Actually, uh, just a short walk from the parks of the Towers of the Eye, uh, there's a hotel called the Moons of Sleep. It's very nice. And perfect for Starfinders, and we actually have a deal with them, so make sure to mention us. Do Moon sleep? One could say they're always sleeping. Until they rise. I'm going to need a surgeon to surgically remove my hand from my forehead after I'm done dealing with you all. Are you Batman again? Yes. I have two Batmans. Uh, that's a little different. Mm -hmm. It's okay. I'll find a voice for this guy at some point. I'm still yes. working on him. Sleep would, sleep would be good. Where are the merchants, though? There's lots of, lots of new shiny things to buy. We have coins and credits! You'll find that trade here is our primary resource, and shops can be found anywhere. Oh, and um, feel free to call if you find any updates or need any assistance. Hmm. What's your account number? Five 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 one. Wow, he got into the comms early. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Sorry, they got into the comms early. Yes. They. They. You must have been here for a long time. You must respect the host. N no, I'm a Vesk. In case you forgot. We have we have no one that we must respect except for other vets. Every time he speaks up and says it, Chris just looks at you like What? Alright. You know, just hanging out in some dude's office. Well, I don't care too much for both people, so I'm gonna head out. Fair. Why is anger? Everyone so angry. I don't know. Maybe they had poor childhoods. They probably just need sleep. Lots of people cranky. Like small child. Well, Shut Up would probably recognize uh, Lashunta hostileness as a age-old racism against bug types. Gotta bring race into it, huh? I mean, technically, it is in the plot. <laughs> I know, in the, I know. in the race thing, it talks about it. I guess the Lashant has had a war with the bug people for a long ass time, and the Sharon are none too fond of the same bug people, so they understand. Yeah, that, that was a bad time. We were we were all Zerg. <laughs> That's my favorite. I would play Sharon if I was allowed to play one that looked like Kerrigan. Why not? I wonder if I can find someone to let me play Kerrigan. Well, now I have to go find myself a Starfinder game. Um. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Go on. Uh, go I guess in. Shut Up will go start exploring the the Citadel and I guess complex. unloading complex, whatever. Uh. Are there any libraries? Oh, so many libraries. Most uh, of them here. Anybody else want one of these clubs or the pistol? I'm good. I think we can sell pretty much all those. Yeah, the, the clubs have zero value, but the pistols can be sold off. Are you okay uh, there, I'm going to keep the batteries because batteries seem always useful. Oh, absolutely. 
I already have a spare battery pack on me, so someone else can use it. You know, I did not buy one, so I will gladly take one. You want a couple? They only have seven each. Mm, yeah, I'll grab a couple. Well, each weapon does come with a fully charged battery. Mm -hmm. Right. But you go through that pretty quick. Yes. I'll All take right. two batteries. They're negligible, right? Uh, the, Wait, it's the L. Oh, no, no, batteries are negligible, you're right. I did buy a uh, industrial backpack, but I have, like, no strength, so... Okay, and right, we get, like, almost no money out of this. Oh, there's your docking bay. Can I look at the library? Here's your last fire. Uh... And there are five of us? Yes. And yes, you may go and use public portions of our library. She'll do that weird smile thing again. Because she knows that when you're happy, you're supposed to show some sort of happiness. <laughs> when you're happy and you know, clap your hands. Right, now the android's going to clap her hands instead of smiling. <laughs> if someone does sing that, she'll look and then just clap her hand. All right. Everybody got their money? Yes. So. Yeah, she'll ask directions and go to the library. Uh, I don't think Android will give sleep. you. Sorry. They will give you some um, directions that I am arbitrarily going to say are left, right, up, down, left, right, and you're there. Um, yeah, and you'll find yourself in a pretty standard library. Like the Jedi Temple Library, actually. Let's make it like that. Does that mean I just gotta sit at a terminal and like everything just pops up on screen for me? It's all on Kindle. Lovely. I just start devouring information. Because I don't think I need to sleep. For an android that might be taken literally. <laughs> <laughs> what are the rest of you doing? Tommy, what are you doing? I think I am... Maybe I'll find some, like, Solarians to talk to if I can spot any by their energy modes. You know, oddly enough, you do know, just based on your interest, I'm sure this would be common knowledge for you. Uh, hold on, I gotta find it. God damn it. Surely I can find it again. I love the fact that there's a level one grenade uh, launcher. Just you saying. know that there is a pause monastery of the empty orbit here, which is a complex where uh, Solarians train under the High Sola, Tabished, Oseu, Marcola. And it's one of the greatest Solarian training facilities outside of Idari or Kassath itself. Well, I guess I'm heading there then. That is actually in the arms. Which is not too, too far from where you are, but it would certainly take some time to get there. Uh, but you're welcome to head over there, or to start heading over there. I really have or my comms, so I'm going to start there. heading that way, yeah. Yeah, and ask for directions and stuff. You know, you'll get there. All right. Who else? We've got an android in the library. We've got a Lashanta heading to go be pseudo-religious. Yeah, you're just heading down to the markets to uh, shop around, see if you can find any other uh, uh, Isoki to 
find out. You will like, actually what... find lots. They like it here. Awesome. Yeah, they're like little rodents. You can't get rid of those fuckers. Yeah, exactly. They're everywhere. I mean, hey, you're so... just like, hmm, where's the dark corner? My yeah. people will be there. <laughs> My people, I'm home. Um, if at all possible, Razzle tag along with the rat man. Um, but he does want to check in with the Pathfinders real quick and just see if there's like, you know, places that they partner with so that they can get discounts there or anything like that. Well, like I said, the Moons of Sleep is the inn of choice or hotel, motel, yeah, I was, hostel. I was thinking more like a Bloodbath and Beyond sort of thing that they partner with. Well, nothing in particular, as most of the Starfinder people tend to have their own ins and outs throughout the galaxy. Um, and make their own connections and get their own deals and whatnot. However, they are a well-known place and fairly respected, so perhaps you can use that to leverage your own deals when bartering. Yep, very similar to those lines. Uh, Yayar is going to find some of these Ratkin relatives, distant relatives, share the news from the home world, uh, telling what's going on in Akaton lately, and basically just... Uh, catch up on all the rumors and happenings of each locale and at some point you know, after that uh, sharing of information and getting to know everyone uh, he's gonna buy some stuff okay and Dan In his... what's shut up doing uh, he's going to stop by a drugstore to restock some serum and then he's going to the amusement park Whee! All right, so we'll say that that's located in the eye. Sure. Which is the nice place in town. How much is admission? Um, half of whatever you paid for a healing potion. Okay. So but once 20... you get in, food and drinks are extremely jacked up in cost. Hmm. Yeah, he's a little bit more savvy than that. So. Uh, but he will enjoy the rides. Whee! There's roller coasters. There's thematic mascots wandering around and taking pictures with children and probably Shada. Damn it, if Shada had said something, we would have had a partner to go to the amusement park with. Uh, he'll probably start posting selfies on his comm. <laughs> Checking in on Epsilon's version of Facebook. No, 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 it's Spacebook. Spacebook, excuse me. Four yeah, square, or whatever the hell thing is. As soon as the notification keeps going off, and you know, the librarian sitting there just staring at Curtis as her comms go bing, bing, bing. She'll look and she'll go join. Excellent. Um, How much was that, Shadow? Dan? What was it? How much was that? Uh, 25 credits, apparently. Cool. Yeah, I haven't quite gotten the feel for how much a credit is worth, so. so... So if it's like any other amusement park, does that mean you pay twice that and get a season pass? What kind of Disneyland are you going to? I was gonna say, it's more like 10 times See, that. <laughs> I have uh, a feeling, though, that she would go to buy a ticket, and they would sit there you know how they're supposed to just ask if you want this and this and this and this she would say yes uh, i think it's 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 like no more than three times or maybe it's just because i'm a resident yeah, residents de definitely get a huge ass discount for where if you if you were if disney you're world. a resident in the same state as, oh, as yeah. disney world you get a yeah. lot big discount because you're local yeah, and you go more, so you're a more steady source of income, whereas actual tourists, they know that tourists going to Anaheim are going to go to Disneyland, regardless of the price. Mm -hmm. Whereas people who live in California are going to go once if it's expensive. They'll go many times if it's cheap. Anyways, carrying on. So, uh, let's loop back around... Uh, Library lady, did you now go to Disneyland? Yeah, I now went to Disneyland. I caught you... up with Shut Up. Alright. And 
back so he, to... he asks you, well, I guess uh, he asked you on the ship where you were from and all of that. Well, you know, you never know. You might have to ask again in case the answer's changed. That's true. If you, if you ask where she's from, she gets a really weird look on her face and just in like a very robotic voice says, redacted. Oh, never been there. Nice place. You Is show. it nice? Redacted. Are you just going to get her in an infinite loop of redacted now? Are you okay? <laughs> Do you need a hug? What is a hug? Uh, Shut up, we'll give her a hug. Aww. That's adorable. Anyways, before we get too distracted by cuteness, I will make you RP snuggles all day. Uh, I'm just Tommy, wondering if you want to guys to sh sh shuffle your feet on some carpet. Monastery, you cause monastery, whatever it was, right. of the empty orbit. What's your intent? I guess to try and absorb as much knowledge as I can just being there. All, all right, so you'll get there. You know, you'll be greeted by a standard receptionist and stuff like that. They'll show you around the complex. You know, you'll get to view, you know, the training areas on, you know, the general for lack of a better way to put it, kind of the factory tour. Right. Um, you know, with trying to sell it to you in the way that a gentle religion might encourage your participation in their practices. And they towed on about the benefits of Solarion doing then the balance of light and dark and et cetera, et cetera. Um, Is there anything in particular you wanted to ask or learn about it or have done? You know, ask for membership papers? Well, I'm trying to think if there's anything like relevant mechanic wise to do here. Not particularly. Um, it'll give you somewhere to train so that next level I don't say, well, where did you learn how to do that? Right, yeah, that's a big reason why he's here. If I wanted to, uh, it's a multi class, yep. I need him like around it and learning. Yep, so that's good. Just bluff factors while you're there. But, I mean, I don't know if there's retraining rules in Starfinder yet. But at least you know. Technically, there is. It's uh, like a device that you use to wipe part of your memory. It's weird. You can only do uh, within the last, like, two or five levels or something like that though and it's kind of expensive yeah well, well maybe you don't have to wipe your memory and you can just retrain like a normal fucking person <laughs> that could be it too <laughs> that's different than multi-classing right yeah so, so retraining just level. means that if you wanted to change something like if you picked a feat and then a couple levels later you're like ah oh, shit i didn't realize that feat was useless you could say okay can i switch it out and i'd be like okay you can retrain it at the solarion place and okay. you'll essentially forget the old feat that you weren't using or that was useless or mechanically broken or whatever it was and replace it with something that you've now trained in. Okay, yeah, well, my guy's mostly here for, like, flavor. Like, he wants to learn as much as he can. Yep. Uh... And I like that. We like flavor here, Tommy. We are the flavor people. Okay. So um, anyways, okay, so... We've got Tommy on the Solarian tour. We've got two people in Disneyland. Yar Yar and uh, Raz, who I keep wanting to call Vesk, but you know, that's just his general thing. All right, come on. That's Yar Yar, racist. Raz, you guys are talking to rat people. Yeah, basically, shooting the shit, sharing the family uh, stories, trying to work out. Uh... Hey, you scratch my behind my ear. I'll scratch behind yours. Like uh, Raz, mostly they reply Raz's, with Raz's Hebrew big guy. Use, Good guy to know. Maybe do deal. I mean, Raz is perfectly willing to do whatever they are going to ask him to do. He is a man of few morals and many talents. Most of his talents involve punching people in the face, though. That's good, because lots of rat folks sometimes struggle with that, because they're very small and have very small fists. Okay, he's got really big fists, so he's there for him. He's a man of these people. 
All right. <laughs> so essentially what we're looking for here is the diplomatic approach to the rat folk to get an in with them. So give me some sort of charisma e check. Probably not intimidate. Doesn't sound like you're trying to scare them. From Yar or from Raz? I'll take from Yar, because Yar Yars is the one trying to sell them as uh, fair. I was afraid of that. Alright. Not absolutely horrible. I mean, you are one of them, and you're like, oh yeah, I mean, you end up being useful. They might, you know, down the road. They seem pretty indifferent. They're not outright hostile towards the concept, but they're certainly not throwing weapons at your feet and worshipping you as gods or anything. <laughs> All right. So you guys have essentially piddled away most of your day doing this stuff. As a potential right. hook for later, uh, Yar Yar will offer any expertise that the local Radfoot might need for engineering expertise. All right. They have perked brows at such notions. Make a note of that somewhere on your sheet, like in your journal. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless they really want to learn about tactics, there ain't shit I can do for these people. <laughs> No, I'm tying your shit in with Yaris, because okay. Yaris is one trying to sell you right. as muscle, right. which right. is a valuable asset. They recognize that. But that particular thing, I want Yaris to jot down in this journal. Sure. All right. So, you guys piddled away the day. All it's right. starting to get late. Some of you are hungry. Some of you are tired. Some of you probably need a bathroom break. Uh, well, when the amusement park closes, uh, shut up. Uh... And I, I assume Corius will begin uh, heading over to the... Moons of sleep. All right, so we'll just say that anyone with Wi-Fi at this point has Google Maps. I figure I have if we Wi-Fi have within it, one mile of any thing I can connect to. Yeah, the, you're fine because this is baseland. I'm pretty sure there's just Wi-Fi here. Yeah, it's uh, every the infosphere of the planet. exactly. I think it's just universally available within the station. Yeah, so once you're hooked up with that, which I'm assuming by the end of the day, you'll have figured out and ask somebody what the password for the Wi-Fi is. Ask? Uh, <laughs> you mean just find it? Yeah. Um, anyways, you're heading towards where, sorry? Uh, the, I'm heading towards the Moons of Sleep. Okay, yeah. that's Corey's. Same. There yeah. you are, and Raz? Uh, I guess once we finish our whole negotiation deal, we'll head over there too. Yeah, yeah, that's good for you. Yeah. And Tommy? Right? I'm gonna find some food. You're gonna find food? It's really easy to find food. You can find- I find food and I consume it. Excellent. But it's I gonna suppose cost you X, Y, Z amount of credits. But I suppose I head over after that. Okay, perfect. So you guys head to the Moons of Sleep. I'm gonna sneeze. Whatever the, just one. whatever the uh, accommodations are, Yar Yar is probably going to uh, strip whatever linens or coverings or heat shielding blankets are on the bed or plank or whatever it is and just pile up in a corner somewhere. Hold on. Hold on. We still have to buy uh, the Tommy, rooms. your meal oh. cost you one whole credit. Getting ahead of myself. Oh Sorry. boy. Yeah, you are getting ahead of yourself there, Mark. I haven't even shown you this place. You might think it's too much trash to stay in. Okay? So, located just a short walk from the Parks and Towers of the Eye, the hotel is centrally located and has both, uh... Both, like, little one-room thingies and suites available. Furthermore, the Moon's Off is offering. I'm assuming you guys follow his advice and mention your star finders. Oh, yeah. Okay. And everything else that they don't want to hear. Exactly. All about the day, I'm sure. It's been a very trying day. Well, no, at this point, he's more focused on uh, his experiences on in Disneyland. Ah, oh, yes, okay, good. Um, so they offer discounted lodgings to Starfinders, um, who book rooms for at least a week's stay. Sure. All right. So, for, you know, just the one 
bed place. It's going to be 16 credits per week. Or for a two bedroom, or sorry, a two bed suite, it's going to be 50 credits a week. What about the closet? Well, you can share with somebody else. Sorry, hey. one more time, what were those? So for just like the little one bed, barely a space, you're looking at 16 credits per week. Or for a small two bed suite, it is 50 credits per week. Why would you pay more than twice as much for just two, one more bed? It's also Shut got up. extra space. It's a suite instead of just like a bed and a table. And well, a uh, Shut up asks any of you if you want to go twosies with him. Um, Raz, do you want to? I don't take up a lot of room. Uh, <laughs> so. Just to just to clarify, you're asking if Raz would like to share a bed with you. No, no, no. He he wants to do the suite. No, no, no. Yeah, I'm talking about the wrath. Yeah. Don't need bed. Just need make my own bed. Uh, so Raz kind of frowns and thinks about that for a second, and then shrugs and says, "It's cheaper." All and right. Agrees. Do you guys subtract, you know, eight credits each or whatever the hell you guys are doing? And 50 total for two beds, right? No, no, no. You guys are taking just the one little space, aren't you? And Yarya was making a rat's nest in the corner. Oh, okay. Sorry, I was misunderstanding. I thought we were trying to put three people in the two bed suite. That would technically be cheaper. Actually, I mean, for that matter, you could like probably put the entire party in the room. <laughs> I mean, Yar Yar doesn't really care. He's going to be huddled up in a corner somewhere, no matter who else is in the room. So technically, it would be two-thirds of a credit more per person, but we'd have more space. And so, also, I'm really curious who's going to share with Shut Up, because I want to know who can take the nattering. I mean, you got to bear in mind that uh, Raz just got done working a job for a super paranoid bomb-making engineer. And so at this point, he's just immune. Like, he'll sigh and he'll grump and he'll groan and stuff, but, like, he'll put up with it. What I'm thinking is four of us can go into one of those suites, because I don't think androids sleep. They don't, actually, at all. But they do dream of electronic sheep. Get so out. I could just sit on the, like, little chair or the sofa or whatever and just sit there and watch you guys. Wow, that's creepy. Watch us sleep. No big deal. Don't read or anything. Just yeah. stare at us while we sleep. So, the two bed suite that's two beds and a couch and a chair for an android. I mean, yeah, why not? Let's do it. So, that's uh, 12 credits, uh, 12 and a half credits from everybody. Uh, uh, Tori's going to take his own room. That's the thing. Poor Tori. Wise. <laughs> Because then we don't have uh, to fight over who sleeps on the couch. I feel like the Vesp would win that fight all the time. Because yeah. I don't think he'd fit. All yeah, he'd have to do is just pick someone and throw them at the couch. Well, I mean, are they are they twin beds or are they just like a queen? Are they two fools? Two doubles. That's not yeah. too bad. Anyways. So we've got Tori in his own room. Is he taking a two-bed suite or just a normal take the one, one bed. bed? Okay, so that's 16 credits from you, and... 12 and a half. I, let's just round up. Okay, so 13 from basically everybody. Wait, no, it's Pathfinder. We round down. No, I'm just kidding. Not when it comes to This mine. is Starfinder. You round up. Well, whatever. No, actually, in Starfinder, you round down. Too. You round down, yeah. That's straight up sad. Playing. Just gotta be kind. Listen. And then uh, Shut Up is definitely going to be ordering room service. Perfect. Wait, 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 wait. That's what, like a credit? Uh, only if it's poor room service. If it's common oh. room service, then it's uh, three credits. Oh, well, definitely com uh, at least the common. The fourth the cost of a room. <laughs> In case anyone was wondering, it's on page 233 of the for rule book for meals and shit. Aquarius will order some room service with you. Not because she needs it, but because she wants to experience it all. 
Yeah, I was just amazed at the concept of someone bringing him food. Is he buying in as well? Sure. Yeah, why not? Let's all get room service. We did just make a pile of money today, so... <laughs> this, this hotel keeper's like, you want one bed, or you want the two bed for four people? And looking at us like, wondering who's sleeping with who? Oh, no, I mean, you gotta look <laughs> around the group and go, well, there's an android, so that's one down. And there's a little rat man, yeah, okay, I can kind of see that. Vesk will probably just shove him under the bed or something. And then if we're all buying in a room service, that's basically just shut up going down the menu and going, okay, one of those, one of those, one of those, one of those, and what everything. Gotta experience it all, man. Randomly, out of nowhere, Chris will... Yeah, see, I'm just sitting on the sofa. There we go. <laughs> just randomly, Chris will just sit there and then clap. It's just one clap. <laughs> And every Scare time, the shit out of everybody in the room, wake it, them all up. Every time she does that, just a furry head pokes up behind the couch. I just want to point out I'm sleeping peacefully. The only person who's going to wake up and not be fatigued in the morning. With no ice cream. True. Yeah, that's your end. <laughs> That's not right. bad. I know. I spent a lot of time looking at sci-fi bedroomy type things. I feel like I know that from somewhere. Where's that from? The internet on a Google search. It looks kind of Pathfinder-y. I.e. Mass Effect pathfinder -y. Kind of does, kind of doesn't. I mean, it's got the color scheme, right? I did look at one of the ones from Mass Effect. It was nice. Hmm. Anyway, oh, well. yeah. <laughs> so you guys ordered room service. You deducted your credits that you spent on room service. Yep. And you have rooms for the week. You're comfortable, secure. You're settled in, and you have some pocket money. You wake up the next morning and rumble. So did we get specific instructions on how we're supposed to investigate this thing, or just, hey, I need you to go check out these nerds. Thanks. Uh, we should probably go to the Puddles. I'm or sorry, level 21. Yeah, Why was the Puddles? The, the two gang... That's where they said the gangs were. Uh, very loose interpretation of that, but yes. All right, to the Puddles. Actually, you know what? to the let's investigate next week because it's 11 and I've been talking for three hours. That's fair. That works for me. Is that good for everybody? Three hour session? Yeah. That's great. Yep. And plus, this is actually a really good place to pause because it does sound like you guys are getting ready to actually get near investigation. Yeah, no, this that time frame is absolutely perfect for me. Ending before 1130 is ideal. Was good for everybody? Uh, I might have to start half an hour later on some days, but I won't know until the day. And that's honestly fine because let's be real, we can all sit here and talk for half an hour. Easily. Easily. <laughs> or just delay. <laughs> like starting and ending a half an hour in either direction is not gonna be a huge deal for me. I I mean I can't start at seven thirty, but I'm, you know what I mean. Later's fine. Yes, later's fine. I can start anytime after eight and I would say we'll always try to end before midnight. Because Sounds I know people good. work on Mondays. All right, I put my uh, notes in. Perfect. All right, thank you for running this. Good job. Yeah, of course. I'm not like Mark. I don't want feedback. I haven't DM'd in a long time, and my ego is fragile. <laughs> well, your ego will take a nice long stroke, as if you did great. Thanks. Especially yeah, for a me system. I did good. Especially for a system that all of us are like, well, maybe it's this. Yeah, I, especially because I'm not very good at it yet. I'm going to be focusing more on, does it sound like you maybe could do it? Probably. 
And that's the system we're going to use for the most part until we all get a little bit more system mastery and class mastery, just to keep things smooth and moving. And then if we find out later that we did something horrifically wrong, we'll know for next time. Yep, that's the way to do it. Um, yeah, good, excellent. All right, at this rate, I figure we should actually be done this book probably at a, assuming we keep kind of keeping at this pace and hitting these various milestones, we probably should actually have a pretty nice flow into the next book without too much downtime in between. Cool. Cool. If you ever need to stretch, just let Chorus do her thing. I will describe how she looks at a, f uh, at a flower and examines it, each petal. It's another, another possibility, uh, Eleanor wrote uh, their Pathfinder Society, The Commencement Adventure, which is kind of a welcome to the Starfinders. <gasps> yeah, you should give me that. You don't have it? I don't have any of the uh, society stuff. I haven't downloaded it. I'm going to wind the stream up for you guys. So thank you, everyone, who's been watching us. Delphi, thank you for joining us. Oh, yeah. Thanks, and human. Have a good night.